Like to call the meeting to order. Roll call. President Byrne? Here. Trustee Hebda? Here. Trustee Schultz? Here. Trustee Marquardt? Here. Trustee Cook? Here. Trustee Grebe? Here. Trustee Williams? Here. Okay, we have a quorum present. Uh, would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any citizens wish to address the board tonight on anything other than what's on committee to hold? If not, uh, proclamation in honor and remembrance. Of Officer Andy Rankin. Uh, uh, <coughs> got one too many. I, I apologize. You got one too many. Uh, stacks. <laughs> yeah, stacks. Yeah. No, I got this. Oh, this one? Oh, one that's bigger print? Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Lynn, probably. Okay, uh, whereas Andy Rankin grew up in Vern Hills and after graduating from Libertyville High School, began his career with the Vern Hills Police Department in September 1999 as a community service officer. Andy was sworn in as a police officer in June 2000, becoming the first officer to be sworn in after Chief Fleshauer became chief in the village and he came into his own as a police officer when he became an investigator where his patience persistence dedication and willingness to help and teach other officers was wild, widely known <clears throat> during his career andy received dozens of letters of appreciation from residents and businesses an exceptionally high number of awards for his work, including in 2006, he was awarded a de departmental uh, uh, commendation for going into a burning home prior to the fire department's arrival and evacuating a resident from the second floor. Was that at Monterey? I believe that was the Monterey one. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it was an act of valor for sure. Uh, in 2014, being awarded departmental uh, commendation for his efforts that resulted in the arrest of a serial arsonist. In 2014, he was named Officer of the Year by the American Society for Industrial Security. And he was always giving back to the community, including being a strong supporter of the Police Special Olympics, participating in the annual Polar Plunge, Caps on the rooftop and, and being one of the founding members of the Run for the Caps 5K race that raised more than $50,000 to benefit the wounded soldiers resulting from overseas. Caps on the rooftop is like a Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise known as the donut drop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he participated in the national night out activities where his prowess as the uh, starting center on the police volleyball team was legendary. Okay. <clears throat> Andy was an avid supporter of Chicago Bears, a doting and loving father to Emily, and a devoted and loving husband to Susan. Uh, now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Roger L. Byrne, village president, and a board of trustees on behalf of the village staff and village residents uh, do hereby express our gratitude to Officer Andy Rankin for his faithful and dedicated service to the village of Vernon Hills. Be it further proclaimed, we express our deepest sympathy uh, to his wife, Susan, daughter, Emily, and family on their loss. Andy will be missed. Dated this first day of March 2016, signed by myself and John Calmer. Uh, I got to share a letter that was sent to me, members of the village staff, and I'm sure all the trustees got it, correct? 
And this is from the Vernon Hills uh, Police Lodge 34. And uh, dear, this is dated February 23rd, uh, 2016. <clears throat> dear Mayor Byrne and members of the village staff, we, the membership of Fraternal Order Police Lodge 34, would like to take this opportunity to say thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your support, presence, kind words, and gestures throughout this sad time. The loss of our brother will not pass anytime soon, <clears throat> but the comfort provided by you and your staff has made the grieving process that much easier. Some of those watching may feel we throw the word family around far too easy. Then again, they do not know us. We are family. No matter what part of town your building sits, we always come together when things matter most. The grip of our handshake is just a bit tighter when we need, need is that one another? Not on another. Okay, Chief. That is why I, I personally love serving this community. Mayor Byrne and the members of the Village Board, your generosity and concern will not soon be forgotten. <clears throat> and we sincerely thank you for it. I once read a quote that I feel is so fitting. Fran families are like branches on a tree. We grow in different directions, yet our roots remain as one. Thank you all for your support, uh, Officer Andy Jones, FOP president. So this is a very moving letter and not to mention humbling. So, uh, okay, you know, in death, we probably have become closer as a family. Mr. President, if I may. Um, there's really not much more that I can add to what Andy wrote because that, that is really as heartfelt as it comes. But on behalf of the family and behalf of the police department, I do want to say thank you to the entire village, uh, especially the village board, public works, administration. During this time of great sorrow and pain, everyone truly pulled together. And I think anyone that was here that day and witnessed the funeral procession or attended the funeral saw that for themselves. The streets were lined with residents. Uh, the fire department pulled out all the stops, had the flags across Deer Path, and stood at, stood at salute. Uh, there were 50 to 60 police cars, procession stretched over a mile. The family was literally blown away. They were in awe. They've never seen anything like this again. Um, we truly gave him a hero's funeral. And that could not have been done without your support and the support of every person that works in this village and the residents. So on behalf of the family and the police department, again, I just want to say thank you. Absolutely. Sad day. And just for, are they still selling these at? Uh... Yes, sir. They're still doing a the fundraising. They're still doing the fundraising activities for the benefit of Emily. Yeah, and, and this is the support uh, badge number 17, which obviously was Andy's. And in July, uh, there's going to be a fundraiser at uh, HITS, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, no, June, 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 right? Yeah, there's a couple of them planned. There is one at HITS, and there's another one planned uh, in Gurney. Gurney, I think, is the, is the um, yeah, at the American Legion Hall. Do you remember when it is? I think it's April. And, and this is to benefit, uh, you know, set up a trust benefit for Emily, uh, Andy's six-year-old daughter. And, uh, you know, hopefully many can participate and contribute. So I'm, sh do we, I'm sure we are. Do we already have a link? On the Vernon yes, Hill? we do. Yeah, okay. But these can actually be purchased at uh, HITS. Correct. Okay. All right, and then the donation just goes to the family, to the trust. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, the rest of the board meeting is canceled because that's such a serious topic. It's, no, nah, I can't do that. But I mean, it was a very incredibly moving day. So, uh, all right. Say hello to a cop, buy him coffee. Okay, a reminder, proposed Milwaukee Avenue Townline town Road Redevelopment Project Area. Joint Review Board meeting on Wednesday, March 9th at 5 p.m. Is that about it? <laughs> what, this is germane to the whole uh, Melody Farm. Correct. Okay, th thank you. All right. Okay, uh, next Village Board and Committee to Whole meeting is uh, March 16th. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's uh, Wednesday due to the primaries being on Tuesday. Right. And we're not going to do it on the 17th because that's St. Patrick's Day. That's correct, Your Honor. Which is a national holiday. It should be a national holiday. I have no objectivity being Irish. So. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Village Manager uh, Community Survey Update. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just quickly, uh, the survey is nearly complete. Thank you for your input at the last meeting. Um, right now, it appears that we are uh, expected to go live within the next two weeks. Um, we'll be sending out email notifications starting out this week, just notifying folks to watch, start watching for this and, and the like. And uh, information will be posted on our website after the survey goes online. So, um, and then after that, we'll be doing a mailer to all the households in, in the community um, right about that same time. And it'll give them directions on how to get access to the site and, um, and encourage them to be part of that. And then finally, Mike Storto and I and Lynn Brandel also did a, uh, a, a TV program. So you can watch for that on Channel 4, um, coming to a home near you. Um, that explains a little bit about, you know, why we're doing it, encouraging people to participate, and if they have questions, yeah. just, you know, yeah, reach okay. out. So, and that's what I got. Okay. All right. Uh, next item is on the vote agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve items A through I? So made. Second. Motion is second. Uh, any comments or questions? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Green? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, unfinished business approval of village board minutes of February uh, 16th, 2006. Is there a motion to a 16? 16. Yeah. Six is. <laughs> Yeah. 2016. I, I'm, I wish I, I was as old as I was in 2006. But uh, okay, so two, made. Th all right. Second. Motion to second. Comments, questions, corrections, deletions. <clears throat> if none, roll call. Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Green. Aye. Trustee Williams. Mm. Aye. Trustee Hebda. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Motion carries. Is there any new business or communication to be co come before the board? I got one. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't, you know, and who are the new owners now, or did they close on the uh, famous Dave's property? Or is that, you know, the guys that want to do McAllister's uh, Deli and Sandwich Shop? Yes, Your Honor, it, the property has been closed. Um, the owner of the property um, also owns a number of franchises for uh, Baskin Robbins and Dunkin' Donuts. Right. Could you just, you know, uh, you know, the reality is, you know, people coming from Victory Center to eventually go there, could they, like, remove whatever those trees are to the entrance? You ever drive that way, oh, Joe? Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, go in front of, you know, Victory Center, and you make the right. There's a tree that almost blocks the lane. In fact, send Public Works out there and trim it up. The right up. Away, they can yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, it's a driveway going into the empty parking lot, but. Oh, okay. 
I'll, just, I'll make a note of that, Your Honor. Nah, just, we'll talk to Dave. Just go trim the thing, the would you? Is, is sitting in this oh, place. is he He'll trim the trees? Oh, is he tri trim the trees? Does he trim the trees? <laughs> Dave can do that. Uh, you know, just, you know, all, you're not going to kill the tree. <clears throat> this is the best time of the year to, of isn't this the best time of the year to prune, <laughs> Dave? A, you know, right I now. Agree. I don't know. No. Yeah, it's when things are dormant. Very good. Yeah, yeah. could you just, you know, because I cut through there, okay? But uh, you got all these, you know, people going there from to, to go to Victory Center, you know. Is that okay? Okay. All right. That's a, anybody else have any new business or? Okay. Are we going to closed session? Um, it's it's your call, Your Honor. Um, I mean, we can see yeah, how it goes by the end. Of, litigation or litigation. It, exactly. Or, I mean, we can see how the evening goes, and if you guys want to for a few minutes, we can at the end of the uh, committee as a whole. Put okay. it in, and then we don't have so. to do it, but in case. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we'll go into closed session. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to adjourn the uh, board meeting and go into committee as a whole? So made. Second. Motion is second. Roll call, please. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Grebe? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'd like to call the committee the whole meeting to order. Uh, first item is approval of committee of the whole meeting minutes of February 16th. Didn't we just? No, that was a board meeting. Okay. February 16th. 2006 slash 16. No, I'm sorry. 2016. There's a second, please. Second. Motion is second. Uh, comments, questions, deletions, corrections. If none, roll call. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Green? Aye. Trustee Williams? <clears throat> Motion carries. Okay, uh, second item, Vernon Hills Park District, 3635 Aspen Drive. Consideration of report and recommendation from Planning and Zoning Commission regarding various items, including the proposed site and landscape plans and special use permit approving the expansion of a community center in a conservation and open space district for property known as the Dolores C. Sullivan Community Center. Okay. Assistant Village Manager Joe Carey. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, representatives from the Vernon Hills Park District appeared before the Planning and Zoning Commission on February 17th of this year to request um, an amendment to the site plan um, and the previously approved special use um, at this location. Uh, what they're proposing to do, uh, quite simply, is expanding the existing site um, by an additional 17,769 square feet. Um, what this will allow them to do is to create a brand new gymnasium on the northeast corner of the property, as well as construct um, an additional expansion on the southeast portion of the building, which will allow them to remodel the building inside, which will allow them to create um, a, a total of four classrooms, which will each serve approximately 15 children each. The Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously approved um, the recommendations before them, as well as some additional conditions of, of approval. Um, these conditions were um, more advisory in nature, and that related to uh, tree preservation, as well as some adjust adjustments to the pathway system that ran along the northeast corner of the property. If the Committee of the Whole feels the request is appropriate, um, it is recommended that staff be directed to, to prepare the necessary ordinance grant, granting approval of the following. Approval of an amendment to the special use permit to allow expansion of a community center, preliminary and final site and landscaping plan approvals, and preliminary and final approval of architectural elevations. Uh, these approvals would be subject to compliance with the conditions of approvals um, listed in your packet. And the petitioners are here this evening to answer any additional questions yeah. as it relates to the items proposed. But this is the parking lot. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Any comments from the board on this? I, I, I just wanted to make sure that everyone realizes, I mean, we know that, but so the people know that it's not going to infringe on the new parking area at the can library. We, can we put up a picture, uh, Mike? Does anybody have a picture of the site plan? Is this top secret? Yeah, no. um, ours finally popped in. Well, they could put <laughs> it up. I mean, just He's so people. It. It's up. There it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. No, we just want to make sure that everybody at home can see it. And, are and who are you? Uh, hi, my name is Tom Richlick. I'm the civil engineer for the facility. With me is Tom Lalonde, is the architect for the building expansion. And who do you work for? Yeah, Walt Hamilton Associates. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right, zoom in. And who is this? Your partner? No, this is our architect. So he's doing. We I don't know you from Adam. So who are you? I'm Tom Lalonde with Williams Architects. We're been uh, retained by the Park District to assist them with the building improvements. Okay. <coughs> Be happy to go through a. Formal Does anybody, like well, I mean, you know, it might be important yeah. for people watching. Yeah. You know. Thank you. Okay, so this is Aspen Drive. This is the existing entrance. The yellow is the existing building. And the uh, kind of pink tones are the areas that we're proposing for the additions. So on the south side, as Joe indicated, uh, the preschool's right here now. What we're going to do is expand into this area, have four full larger preschool rooms and then remodel the interior of the building for a new main entrance on the east side and staff offices in this location and then as Joe said up in the northeast corner a new gymnasium to basically replicate uh, what the current gymnasium How many they square have there feet now. is it a total about 17,000 square feet for added the gymnasium uh, the gymnasium is about 13 okay so everything else is four. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. Okay. But I can so, so it. the, I don't know, pink, or whatever. It's, I don't, you know, whatever. Uh, the is, is taking. Is that affecting the uh, playground, the outdoor playground? The playground's going to remain generally in the same location. Be uh, moved southward to again accommodate this new main entrance. Okay. But yeah, it's going to be in the same. Well, location. you have this. Oh, okay, so the the present entrance is gone. Yeah, we're going to remove that. We're going to remove the drop off lane in this location. So yeah. This is going to become green space, and then there's going to be a fenced in enclosure on the outside of the preschool. So as the kids come out, they'll be in a safe environment, be able to go to the playground. Yeah. Okay, so there's only there's only going to be one main way in. That's correct. This would be the main entrance. Okay, the so then where's the other exits? Um, there's an exit in this location currently, another exit in this location, and then there'll be an exit out of the gymna new gymnasium. Okay. There are also doors that exit out of the main multi-purpose rooms in yeah, this okay. area. So the public basically is coming in one way. Correct. Okay, that's, that's fine. Is that okay, Cindy? You know, I... Um, oh. I had been laid on, yeah, sure. The uniqueness of this design for board that you don't understand is that right now our preschool area is open and it's not under a lot situation. Right, right, right. This is going to be a real plus for those kids, especially that playground because kids can jet out to the parking lot and now we've got it more secure. So that's going to be a, a nice amenity to have. Plus the gym, um, the uniqueness of the gym that we use it for preschool. People come in and we've been kicked out of the gym before because of other uses. And then hopefully with the school district looking at what they want to do, that would be a nice component to add to um, the park district down the road. So it really will be a very nice feature. Mm -hmm. And I think most people don't use that drop-off area. If they do, they're parking there yeah. when they shouldn't be and they're getting ticketed by the police, which is okay. But, you know, we're just, I think this is going to be nice for people. We've got one main entrance to come into. I know that PNZ was concerned about the trees, but if you look at the size of the trees and to try and save those is nearly impossible. They'll probably die because they're huge. So we'll put some nice things in, right, Jeff? And, 
and, and we also need a good sight line in there too. Yeah, and uh, Jeff Fuzier, Executive Director of the Park District, to answer your question, Cindy, on the trees um, that was brought up, there's, there's three large trees right in that circular drive that um, are gonna need to go, unfortunately. But we do have two trees right outside the playground that we are gonna spade and replant those. And then there's also three evergreens back where the new gymnasium is going to go. We're going to salvage those and replant that. So there's a total of eight trees on the site. Five of them we're going to salvage and replant. And then obviously we'll have some new landscaping in and around the building too. But in going forward into the future, if, if somehow, some way, District 73 needed classroom space, what would that, how would, could they do it here? Yeah, we've, well, actually, Tom and his team has, has, was, was hired by the school district to do some conceptual designs for them early on in the planning stages. So we've given them, we presented to them a couple of options. One that would be pretty much on our property, and then that didn't really suffice for the space that they were needing. So it's going to need to go in an area north of Sullivan that gets into where it is the village's property so we've we've prepared some just conceptual designs um and we're just but would, it, it would still be attached though to the Sullivan yeah the plan side. mayor would be as, as cindy mentioned with the gymnasium would be to somehow right on just the west side of the gymnasium that they would have some connectivity of their building into the gym yeah and so that during the daytime uh, obviously, they wouldn't have to construct a gym. They could use our gym during the 8, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So there would there'd be another entrance? Uh, there'd be an entrance for them to get into the building on that. On right, the west and then side. they could yeah. circulate in, obviously, into the rest of the facility. Right. And so whatever, what, what, what you're showing to the north is just a, tr a trail path. Correct. So that would... Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That was my that, question. Oh, I'm okay. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> no, I'm All right. But any, okay. Trustee Schultz. Yeah, this seems like a very economical use of space, and I like the idea of a single entrance and the, the gated or fenced area for the kids uh, and out to our fenced area. So everything seems, you know, quite, uh, quite reasonable, and I see no problem um, going away from uh, this. The only other thing that I was looking at and looking at a more overall plan, the only disappointment I have is that we held up the library from building out the parking that they believe they need and it appears they do need. Um, but with that being said, that's bridge, water under the bridge. The um, thing I'd like to see is some greater level of connectivity between their parking lot and your walking paths and based on this particular drawing that you provided, there really isn't a specific. Now, it looks like that has a spur on it that's not on the drawing that I received because that doesn't have the parking lot in it. That's a yeah. older satellite view. You're talking about the north spur? This, yeah. The this little spur here? Yeah, is, is that yeah, going so that, to? That's, that exists. Okay. It's just a, yeah, the, the library put that in uh, just recently when they did their lot oh. up in this area. So this actually covers you into the lot and it actually okay. takes you right into their building. Okay. Um, All so right. It's a nice little walk path yeah, that they put it's, in for us. It's not shown on. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the one we're looking at, it's not right. shown. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that was my only thing was I wanted to have a little more direct connectivity and I haven't yeah. walked that area, so. Okay. All right. Okay. Is, is there any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Comments or questions? If none, roll call. Trust, <clears throat> Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Grebe? None. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. We're not changing this, right? No. I'm sorry. That's, That's okay. You could be, <laughs> you know, snotty. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Yes. All right. Uh, senior parking options at Village Hall. Okay, does everybody agree with staff on number four? No. <laughs> no. No. Come on. No. No. Oh, my God. Uh, he hearing that there's not clear consensus, I'll... Uh, I'm getting a heavy heart. Uh, I think there's clear consensus that no it's one needed. up here, it's other than no maybe <laughs> the village board president likes parking number... No, I mean, no, four. I think, you know, some of the seniors uh, that I talked to at uh, the Christmas lunch or holiday lunch, but that's a quick... Okay, we could do, do more than that. Or we don't want to do anything. No, well, no let's we talk. want to do let's more talk. than that. Let's talk. It, All right. Let, All right. Let, me, let me give a, a I'm just very, saying you very could do quick that back. one like tomorrow, right? <laughs> we absolutely could. Um, it, it sounds like the option one was the original one discussed at the previous meeting, and it's too far away. No one likes option one. We'll move on to option two. Um, option two, it recesses three parking spaces uh, by uh, Roger Kynes' bench. Uh, the price tag on that is $32,000. We don't anticipate that this would require detention. Um, option three, option three connects the, by the mailbox through the circular drive into the inspector area and we could gain uh, six new handicap spaces. It's about $40,000. This one is going to be difficult in terms of whether detention kicks in or not. I reviewed it. It's right at the split of a watershed that goes to the pond uh, over my shoulder or it extends to the um, golf course areas. So this one may require additional level of work in terms of potential detention. Um, the, the fourth one's the one that uh, the mayor was talking about. Essentially what this would propose is to mark off uh, five new senior own, only spaces. It would end up being signed on both ends saying it's senior only. I have talked to uh, our ADA coordinator, Mike Atkinson and uh, uh, Bob Kinney. It is permitted in terms of that, similar to if there's maternity and, and other type, specialty type parking. And I think someone wants to uh, give point, some input. You, you're, you're using the term senior only. Is that handicapped or is it senior only? It is specifically senior only. If no, this area had that. to be handicapped uh, parking, it would okay. not meet our ADA requirements. But it, it, it is uh, set up that seniors could access the handicap ramp uh, that's there, but it cannot be because it's a, dro uh, a delivery area, it cannot be striped off for handicap stalls okay. in this configuration. I, I just want to know how the police department's going to enforce that. Actually, we talked about it, and we would probably be a, a concerted effort with uh, the building department. Since the building department is here all the time, they, they're able to write code violations. <laughs> And so since they're here all the kind time, of sticker if, or hanging tag yeah, or something yeah. to delineate what is, that was my concern. Exactly. Yeah, it'd be no problem. I, I think the village even had village stickers at one time. Not. Yeah, we did. Yes, we, we did. did. So it, we could easily do something like that to identify them as seniors. So it'd be senior parking. Put the sticker in your window as well. Can't you still get a sticker for free if you drive into Chicago because there was some craziness going on? You, you know. I, I, Chicago's I, crazy. No, you're right. There are a number of communities that a, don't have them, that don't, don't, have, have don't require them. They people. Yeah. There's a number of communities, and I think we're one of them, and I know Inverness was another one that didn't require village stickers but supplied them to their residents as a courtesy because if you do go into the city and you don't have a village sticker, you got a $200 ticket. It's like your interloper. No, I exactly. I just want to know that the board does know that 55 and older is considered senior. 50. <laughs> Trying to aid, like, well, you know, everybody up over. here everybody up here can park out there. <laughs> so you got a problem with actually, it? I no, I just wanted <laughs> you to know that. Well, no, actually, I think you can basically make it whatever you want to make it if you set a regulation. Because I've been to a number of places where it's, you know, ARP is 50, then some places 55, then 60, 62, 65, mm -hmm. depending upon where I, you're at. I, well, I believe, yeah. unless okay. we've changed it, but at one time, and the only reason I remember it is because Trustee Benson at the time had a fit when he found out he was a senior citizen. <laughs> but, I, but I mean, it, it, oh, yeah, well, no. 55 is for our 
It was yeah. senior organization, right? No. <laughs> Is that the bottom age for the senior group that's here in the hall? Yeah. Well, I'm sure we're okay. Yeah. Trustee Schultz. Yeah, you can throw your Medicare card <laughs> up on the dash if that helps. Um, that's true. Yes. Well, that's, that's good at 60. So we're, we're going to give them little hangers. Yeah. Or um, something. Uh, but to get back to the point at hand, I'm not a fan of number four. Uh, going back to when I first got my driver's license, which is going back yes. whatever, 50 years, give or take, um, mm. the reason most people failed was that they couldn't parallel park. That was in the days when Elson Avenue had the course. This is well beyond <laughs> most of you, but anyway, they had a course and you had to parallel park. And um, I don't want to have our folks engaged in playing bumper cars parallel parking. So I, I do not see the validity in number four at all. So th the question is between number two and number three, uh, two gives us a viable solution pretty quick. Three gives us the maximum number of spaces. I really don't know what we need in the way of spaces. I attended several of the same luncheons that uh, His Honor did, and I was buttonholed the same way. Uh, they are looking for some spaces that are closer to the building, especially in the winter time, especially on breezy days. And you get a certain amount of cross currents going through here, and they're saying that some of the uh, elderly ladies who only weighed yeah. 95 pounds were getting blown over. So whatever we do, the other thing that I'd like to do is also install a railing from some access point to whatever parking we have all the way to the door along the building so that they have something to assist them walking to the door. Because um, that was really one of the bigger issues was that no matter how close they were, they still had to traverse uh, a significant distance that there might be some ice and snow and whatever. So along that line there, if we could add a, a railing, uh, just a grip bar, that would be. Where do you, where do you want to Which put the railing? Right out here, right where those, right where the architect the and uh, Jeff and the others are walking right now. Um, okay, so uh, something to the south. Yeah, to the side. I'm not suggesting anything. No, no, I, no. I mean, we kind of south. So, um, of the personally, building. Personally, I'm in favor of uh, option number three, but I'm amenable if we want to mini minimize cost to go with option number two. Okay. Well, my my feeling on four is we could do it like post haste. Yeah, I'm. And, and it actually accommodate some people like right now. But I'm afraid that they're going to have oh. certain diff a lot of difficulty in parking there. All right. Because Are you having really difficulty some, some yet? Or? Pardon? Are you, you have a problem parallel no, parking? No, I, I still have park? most of my Did you skills. Park? Wait. I had to parallel park can a you bus, park? so I think I can put a car in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, okay. I mean, what are they going to do? Hit each other? Yes. Well, if they're okay. insured with the same carrier, there's no deductible. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, there's also some obtuse angles there that make uh, that a little more problematic. Huh? If you take a look at the drawing. Here, can't we make the spaces kind of big so you could just pull pull in? Uh, Trustee Schultz, there, you know, listening to the input of the board, right now I'm proposing five spots. Right. We could end up making it four spots, the ones not at the very end. Let's see, I think I've actually numbered them. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, space, make... Spaces one through four, <laughs> we could make those just three and make them plenty wide. That would make it easier for uh, parallel parking, but I, I, I offer that as a solution. Which, would you, which one would you take out? So, space three is right on the corner. I would end up uh, elongating the other ones and make those four parking spots three <clears throat> total. So you take three out and you make four. Y y yes, sir. But y y I guess I take three. What out. is existing five? That's not really affected at all. If you, <laughs> if you that one is you know what I mean. Concern. I I feel that uh, the seniors would be able to adequately. Yeah. Park there. They're going to um, Right. It is, there, there are some. So then you got, then they would make that four, three, 
take out the radius. I mean, wherever the ra you know the the big three. Yeah. Okay. I I would just like to accommodate people, be, you know, before the next snowstorm, or you know what I mean. Well, be to do the parking lot and all to really change everything. That's gonna you know take some time. I'm just talking. We can always repeal this, right? Yes. yes. Trustee Schultz, we can always repeal the five in front of the building. If you're bound and determined to do something immediately, I have no problem doing that, but putting in the four, I think, is a more practical solution. However, I really believe that the direction of this board should be giving is a longer-term solution and to that end, I recommend number three. Uh, it also provides the ability to get that uh, walk area and railing uh, nearer to uh, the point where they're parking. So three would put it south of uh, the existing circle? It put it on the, uh, uh, the front west, lawn? More west, I guess. The green yeah. Okay, more west, but basically northwest the, since they're nothing. Gonna go, they're going to have a, a driveway from this circle right. through the village parking lot. Yeah, where Barb and I and Tom and Cindy park goes away. Well, that doesn't put them any. Okay, I can park closer. Now. I know, but you could park here. Okay, so public. I mean, uh, well, it gets them the building to commission the can't park there anymore. Correct. Right. Okay. Well, no, no, no. There's still four There's spots. Four. There's four spots along the tree line. All along the tree line. Yeah. Okay. So all we're doing there is putting in a sidewalk. No, we're putting well, we're in putting in a lot of paving. Putting paving. Yeah. yeah. Parking spots right there. Three, four, well, and he's one, also okay. said that he doesn't six, know about 70, the drainage, so we know we've got 40,000 plus oh, he's got dollars will probably be spent there. Yeah. Where this you can mm. do immediately at very little cost. Mm. I'm for four. Well, yeah. I, I, the only so thing I, I want everybody to consider is that walk that's in addition is the railing. I know that's going to add money too, but put it in the middle as opposed to a side because everybody coming in and going out is going to be using the same side. If you put it in the middle. Or put we don't have a picture of what that will look like. Is there a picture? No. Yeah. The, the railing, uh, that's, that's a new concept, uh, but that's something that we could uh, consider. But yeah. just for the well, sake of getting know. this that's moving, because we're supposed to be doing about, budgets yeah. tonight, we'll I'd make a motion for option four. I'm sorry, but I do. I want to get it done now because they need a walkway. But we can always do three later, but let's try four. Option four, cutting it down to four Cutting spaces down, taking number three right. out, elongating the other. Take four, first myself. Yeah, Is because there a second? Dave's point on, Dave's point on that third parking space, if you are going, to have a tr are going to have trouble parallel parking, it's that third space because it's a weird angle. And by eliminating that and elongating the other ones, you get back to a more standard right. parallel park. I agree. Yeah. And second agrees? Second. second agrees. Okay, there's a motion and second. Any it, what, trustee have to? It, it could this be like temporary till we get to a permanent solution? But let's get something going and the, uh, for them now, yeah, and then right. we can and then talk we can about still this talk later. About the cost. Right. Right. <clears throat> well, I, we're going into the budget, so what <laughs> the hell? You know, yeah, we'll Wait, cover it. Yeah, that. I guess what's the next step to make it right, a more permanent, more permanent solution? But this may end up solving the problem doing it this way. We may not change it at all. Yeah. yeah. Try it out and see. It. We'll try it and see how it works out. So I'll second. I've already I'll got a second. second. We do? He'll okay. third it. Can you put. I'll third it. You'll third it. Time frame on it? Like, can you give me 90 days or. I would wait for at least see, through the, just, the winter yeah. months and see how they look. See the it input. around the corner? <laughs> I'd see yeah. what the see. input is. We'll just see. A and April, no, put a line on March, the April, budget. May, yeah. so by June. What direction uh, are you? We'll ask the seniors. If I can ask the motion maker, uh, what direction are you giving with regard to the railing? I think that's a separate issue. Yeah. Let's. I wouldn't do the railing the now. Railing, I mean, if we're only the doing. The railing we need, but let Dave look at that. pricing on that, too. <clears throat> yeah. And come back at the next meeting, maybe, with yeah. something. I can. Thank you, Dave. How's that? Okay, there's a motion, a second. Any further comments or questions? If not, roll call. Trustee Marquardt? Aye.
Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Green? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. For the record, I'd vote aye too. Maybe we could have a moving sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Motion <laughs> carries. So much easier. All right, for next me. is uh, <laughs> the budget. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Ooh, wait. <laughs> okay. We're into the budget. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. I'll just jump right in. If sure. Okay. okay. Um, tonight, uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then Nikki's going to do a budget overview and kind of walk you through um, the budget in general, specifically talking about uh, general fund revenues, et cetera, et cetera. She'll also do a PowerPoint presentation tonight a little bit, just that it, it's a thumbnail summary of the budget, um, of the proposed budget, um, and then... From there, then the individual uh, department heads will then talk about their uh, hopes and dreams, or their budgets um, for the coming year. Um, the, the hope tonight um, is that we can get through the police department budget and the related sub-funds that go along with that, the public works budget and the related sub-funds that go along with that, and then we can see how your energy level is, and then we can talk further from there. And in whatever we don't finish tonight, the hope would be to conclude that on March 16th. Um, and then from there, we'll have a public hearing on the budget in the first meeting in May, or April, I should say. Um, so, okay. Um, on behalf of the entire staff, I'm, I'm pleased to present to you the proposed fiscal year 1617 uh, preliminary budget document. Um, the budget that you have and the document you have before you represents an effort by the various departments which have occurred and who have been working on this uh, document for the past five months. I wanted to take just a minute to thank each of the department heads and their respective teams for the detailed work they've done on the budget. Um, a lot of hours, uh, a lot of gnashing of teeth as you'll hear, and uh, a lot of hard work was done, so I appreciate all their efforts. I also wanted to specifically thank Nikki for her efforts in preparing the budget I think as you all know and as a, a number of people know, in the past 12 months we've gone through significant transition within the finance department, obviously with Larry's retirement, uh, hiring of a new assistant too, implementing a slightly more robust uh, budget process, um, et cetera, um, new trainings, new processes as, as the like. And as you will see tonight, she's met every challenge so far, and again, I would say thank you very much for your efforts. In preparing tonight's budget, we faced a number of things. Uh, the lack, obviously, of a state budget has presented significant challenges in our preparation of the proposed budget. All the stories of the billions of dollars of unpaid bills, lack of discussion on the budget between the leaders, the rumors of reductions in funding that municipalities may receive or that they currently receive, including the loss of LGDF or income tax revenues, MFT, E911 funds, and use tax among the four that they have looked at in the past. There's also speculation right now that there may not be a budget until after the November elections, which would put them nearly five months into another budget year. At this point, honestly, we have no idea what the, bu what the state's going to do with their budget, how they're going to impact potential revenue coming to the local municipalities. We will continue to monitor the state and local, or uh, state and the budgetary related developments and coordinate r responses with you, our legislative leaders, and the various councils of governments which we are a part of and participate in. Once we get a clearer direction um, and some, hopefully, some direction from Springfield, we will advise the board as to how it will impact the, the, our budget and make recommended adjustments as necessary. So how did we approach the board or approach the board and with this budget this year? Nikki and I asked the staff to look at the budget from two perspectives. First, we asked them to prepare a normal budget, which reflects maintaining all current programs, manpower levels, capital projects, and schedule of replacement of capital equipment. Second, we asked them to each look at and review their budgets with the idea of looking at doing a reduction in overall spending by 
<coughs> you may ask why 5%? As you know, the state is looking for ways to raise revenue by reducing revenue payments to municipalities. One of the biggest ways to do this is to reduce income tax or LGDF payments that we currently receive. As you know, we receive approximately 2.4 million from LGDF funds. The state has talked about cutting this amount by as much as 50%, which equates to a reduction of almost 1.2 million. LGDF, as you know, is our second highest revenue source behind sales tax and is used to fund current operations. How much is it per capita? Um, oh, excuse me. Divide 25,000 into 2.4. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. That's uh, uh -huh. about 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Right. See? I went to a Catholic grammar school. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Flashcards. Ah, uh, yeah, the first time, yeah. The staff did first time, second time, I wouldn't have. You know. Staff did a great job overall in looking at their budgets and working through this 5% reduction. Um, we've asked them some difficult questions and asked them to go back and refine the initial submittals, and those refinements are reflected in proposed budget, I as you will see tonight. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I'm sorry, Jeff. In spite of the state's lack of direction, we're continuing to plan for our future. Upon completion of the community-wide survey, I will ask the board to use the results of the survey to update the goals of the village's 2012 strategic plan. That request, um, we will, as a part of that request, we will also request that a consultant be brought in to work with the board, and that money is included in the administrative budget uh, that you will see most likely on, May 6, or on March 16th. Later this year, we will initiate the discussion on the future disposition of the Lashen Center. With the Park District planning to leave the building in late spring of 2017, we must decide what will happen to this budget or this building going forth into the future. We are continuing to work on refinements to the budget and the multi-year financial plan. Over the next year, we will ex expand our focus to include refinement of future budget documents to enhance transparency and clarity, pro projected manpower requirements, where we can anticipate retirements and have determined that the positions should be refilled, we will request uh, to hire replacement employees prior to the retirement to share knowledge and sustain our operations. We'll also look at capital improvement plans as they relate to infrastructure and properties, capital replacement plans for vehicles and major equipment, where possible extending the life cycles of these equipment um, for future years long-term budget uh, or long-term building maintenance schedules for all village-owned buildings and structures. We'll also look at alternative service delivery options, including development of additional partnerships with other organizations. We do face challenges, as I said, assessing the impact of the state's financial crisis and their focused attention on local government revenues as a means to closing the state budget. Shortfalls, <laughs> as we know. Continue our work with our legislators and, and councils of government on public safety related pensions and benefit issues. Again, continuing to assess the impact of the Affordable Care Act on staffing levels and operational costs, and also maintaining our leadership position as it relates to retail commercial activities in the face of increasing internet based shopping uh, pressures. Going forward, as you will hear and see tonight, the proposed FY 1617 budget is our normal budget and does not include any adjustments based on speculation related to the state's possible cuts to LGDF funds. The formulation of the proposed budget continues our approach of taking a consistent yet measured approach to providing services to our residents and customers. The proposed budget will continue this measured approach while focusing on long-term financial sustainability in the face of growing challenges which are out of our control. Should the state decide to cut a portion of the local budget revenues or local government revenues to balance their budget, we have options in our financial toolbox to replace those lost state revenues. We're fortunate in where we are right now as compared to other communities because a lot of, the, of our neighbors, for instance, have maxed out various tax options that they have and are going to be impacted severely by potential cuts by the state. And finally, it's important to point out that the village continues to be financially strong. 
This, this is a credit to obviously the mayor and the board members for their vision and direction. We continue to hold, again, the AAA bond ratings for, from S&P and Moody's. We continue to have a strong balance sheet, an attractive and vibrant community, and we are located in a highly desirable area of the county and the state. And if there are any other questions, I'll turn it over to Nikki and she'll begin the detailed review of the proposed budget. Thank you, John. Okay. Before you, Jen, thanks. Before oh. you um, at each of your places is a printout of the PowerPoint presentation that is also on the screen so all the folks at home can see it as well. Um, and this will go along um, with my overview as well. The overall 16-17 overall proposed budget is $28,764,317, no rounding there. Uh, this is about a 2.9% increase from this year's budget. This figure includes all expenditures, transfers, and use of reserves throughout all of the village funds. Projected revenues total $28,565,250, which is a 4.46% increase over the current year. This slide uh, shows all of the budgeted amounts by fund um, and the grand total for the entire budget village-wide. Just a simpler version of what we have in the actual budget document. Um, just a, a few comments about revenues in the general fund. Uh, sales tax is projected to increase from the current budget by 6.5% or approximately $650,000. This figure is net of uh, required economic incentive payments that are ongoing. Sales taxes in this budget have been adjusted because an economic incentive agreement between the village and the developer of a property for a major grocery store um, is expected to be paid off in fall of 2016. Once this is paid off, this will add approximately $250,000 a year to our sales tax revenue. We are anticipating that this would be paid off about six months in, so we'll see half of that this year. So that was included in the estimate, um, and this is the and only when agreement. When opened, like five years ago? 2010, yeah. About 2010 was when the agreement was signed. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. right. So they've done well. Um, and this is the only economic incentive agreement that we expect to pay off early at this time. Um, as compared to this time last year, the village's revenues have been enhanced by the implementation of a home rule sales tax that took effect on January 1, 2015. This was approved to offset an economic incentive agreement with the mall. Um, the sales tax is currently running above projections for the current year. Uh, income tax, or LGDF, is projected to be approximately 2.9 million. Screen move, or is it just? Watch this. Are you still? What are you? Which screen? Not a screen. I'm looking at. It. No. Okay, but there's other slides. There are other slides. Yeah, there okay. are other well, slides. Right, keep, right, keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Um, this yeah, okay. the screen in front of you just yeah, shows um, some of the major revenues in the general fund. The, the bars. Okay. Um, so the local share of income tax is expected to increase by approximately 3%. Um, as village manager Kalmar stated, due to the lack of direction that we've received from downstate, this budget does not anticipate any reduction in this revenue source. Um, therefore, this estimate assumes that LGDF will remain unaffected during this fiscal year. The construction of the AMC Theater in Hawthorne Mall has increased the amount of amusement tax significantly. Although amusement tax revenues are running slightly below what we were projecting, the actual receipts are already 285% higher than the entire year's receipts in FY14-15. So for Star Wars, huh? Star Wars is a great, a great addition. Um, for <coughs> FY and Mad Max Fury Road, too, I'll bet. That's done okay. well too. And after the Oscars, now it'll do even better. So. <laughs> For FY 16, 17, we're projecting $300,000 in amusement tax revenues, and that's village wide. Licenses and permits are projected to decrease by, by approximately 13% from the prior year, and these are based on historical revenue patterns, so we're beginning to normalize this revenue. Uh, please note that no permit fees have been included for the potential construction of the propo proposed Menards retail store, and that will be dependent on timing. 
This slide shows the expenditures by function. Um, this is split up by department. General fund budget e expenditures are set at $21,450,547, which is approximately 5% over the current budgeted level. Overall general fund expenditure growth is $1.03 million more than last year's budget, which includes increases for debt service, fringe benefit increases, and insurance. This level of expenditures results, a, results in a surplus of $680,263 in the general fund before subtracting the capital, summer celebration, metro station, and DUI sub funds. This budget includes a $395,000 contingency that has been budgeted into reserves to offset any unplanned expenditures that might occur during the year. Please note, this budget does not include any salary increases for any of the employees. Further discussions on salary and range adjustments for all employees are expected to occur in the near future. Also included in this expenditure figure is an increase of $129,000 for insurance premiums for the village's property, casualty, and liability insurance program. This change in premium was due to a move from a traditional premium program to a minimum maximum program that was approved by the board in November 2015. Expenditures for capital improvements are nearly $1.7 million, which includes the road program, electronic message boards, annual pavement patching, sidewalk repairs, golf course improvements, and repairs to the Deer Path culvert, among other items that will be reviewed by Dave Brown this evening. Debt service expenditures are budgeted to increase by about $434,000, which represents a 119% increase over the current budgeted level. This is as a result of the first scheduled payments on bonds that were issued in 2015 and 16. As you may recall, these bonds were issued to finance the purchase of the Starcom system, a contribution to the OPA property purchase, and to refinance the last of the remaining 2007 TIF bonds. The Starcom was what, the uh, dispatch? That is the, the dispatch center. Correct, the new radio dispatch system. 1.2? Less than that. That's a for the across entire, all That was across all systems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then our that, share was closer to the 800. And that's to take over yeah. how many towns? Uh, that's for Libertyville, Lincolnshire, uh, and us, and it's also being used by Mundelein. But we don't dispatch for them. But we'll still all share the same radio network, which is part of the overall county network system. And then countryside has their own. Correct. Different frequencies entirely. But are they in our facility? Uh, yes, they are. Correct. Okay. Just one final note on debt service. Um, the total non-TIF debt payments for the FY16-17 budget are nearly $800,000 this year. This slide shows the uh, projections of revenue and debt for the existing Vernon Hills Town Center TIF. Um, I do want to clarify that this does not include any of the new construction that's happening right now, so you will see a slight gap between the debt service payments and the revenues. So we are projecting that we will get to a break-even point once that construction is complete, um, but right now that will not have taken effect. This TIF fund has a budgeted surplus of $186,000 after all collected revenue and debt service payments, which will be aggregated and used in future years to pay debt service and repay its loan from the replacement fund. Total TIF debt payments will be approximately $1.2 million in the coming budget year. <coughs> this slide shows the projected revenues and expenditures for the motor fuel tax fund. Uh, this year, this fund will use fund balance reserves of just over $100,000. This budget will fund $800,000 in road improvements this year. Motor fuel tax revenues are projected at $700,060, which is approximately 6.5% less than the current year budget. The main reason for the significant decrease in revenues is in that FY15-16, the current budget year, was the final year of the Illinois Jobs Now program. Um, thus, this revenue is no longer anticipated in the budget year. And this was, I think, about... $100,000 in this current budget year, so that is a significant drop. Haven't we seen a continuing decline in the 
decline? We have seen a decline in, in the motor fuel tax. Here. This is a flat, yeah. So we should so we adjust really that going looking, forward. Maybe 600,000 in 18, 19, 700,000 in 19, 20, yeah. 750,000. So we will see that continue to decline. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because we will in future budget years have to um, bring a discussion back to the board of long-term funding for our road program. Um, the 1.2 million expenditure level that you see here that's relatively flat um, came forth as a recommendation in relation to the pavement management program um, and our roads will not improve. <laughs> they will continue to deteriorate over time and we will have to begin investing significant dollars down the road um, to maintain that level of pavement. But unless, unless we take a walk in Fairway Lakeview Hawthorne. Yeah, that was my that question. What, what's the status of the matching funds there that we were, that's why we, we were. The Council of Mayors. Yes. Uh, How's that going? Uh, things are going very well, actually, as part of my report, I'll uh, provide an update, but... Um, will that change these numbers? It, it will change these numbers. Uh, Drastically? You got it. Phase two, the court will get a quarter million dollars. Phase two engineering was not approved um, for funding before. Now it will be allowed uh, for funding. So we're postponing this project at least another year, maybe a second construction season. I just met with Civil Tech today on it. So very likely uh, we're moving that project out for a construction of, it's gonna be a bid letting in uh, November of 2018, so construction in 2019. Uh, by doing that, we save two, 240, 250,000 because phase two engineering would be paid for. Um, in terms of the other part of it, um, it used to be 75% federal dollars. Now it's going to be 80% federal dollars. So there's some savings there also. So, so do these re numbers like the 1.2 mil reflect our 20%? <laughs> <laughs> um, it would only be the Lakeview Fairway uh, Hawthorne intersection project that is shown at 2017, 2018 in the table. Um, the other numbers, uh, Nikki's exactly correct. Uh, our revenues are at uh, roughly 700,000, uh, 700, but uh, we need to spend about 1.2 million. One of the things that we're looking to do is try other techniques like reclamite, which would push the curve out. So we have, we're looking to potentially spend less than 1.2 million each year on a road project yeah. by just managing it differently. The, the 2.5 million though, that's, is that entirely the Lakeview Hawthorne project? Or is there some road? It's gotta be close. The road program would be suspended that year. Thanks. So that it would, would, so be, they, that would it, be the yeah, road program. The project's program. not going to be, the, it won't be 2.5 million for that project. Okay, and it'll probably be, be in. Be less. Oh. And it'll probably be in 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But it won't and that includes signalization and everything? Yeah, it, it includes uh, improvements to the Hawthorne uh, Lakeview intersection signals, uh, going from a split phase to uh, a regular phase signal, um, capacity enhancements, widening uh, from there going to 60, widening from there to the police department, resurfacing of the, the roadway from there to the post office. We could use 80% funding rather than us paying 100% for yeah, the resurfacing. Yeah, improve everybody coming out of Portillo's and yes. all that fun, yeah. But it's not going to But we don't need to make this decision no, no. today. Um, it is going to be a couple of years out but, and we can have more discussion. But the revenues, why are you freezing it at this? Just because of the stalemate in Springfield? At this point, yeah, just to keep okay. it steady, yeah, but. To trustee Schultz's point, it, 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 should be, it should be it should be declining. Yeah, they, they should be you declining because we've had a. Well, constant. I was just going to say that right. six ninety five might be aggressive because of the price of oh, gas, yeah. right? Oh, it could be. No, yeah. no, it's a, it's I a mean, it's a cost per gallon. Steady. More okay. Priuses on the road okay. have a bigger well, we, effect. We'll get more money. That's right. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's a dollar fifty. Right. People buy. Okay. No, no, no. It's more Priuses on the road because they're not using gas and the EPA mandated 
increase in the mileage, the fleet mileage, yeah. reduces the total number of gallons consumed, and it's a cost per gallon. It's not on a percentage basis. Right. So overall, there's fewer gallons of gas. So it'll just, used. it will keep going down. It will continue to, yeah, okay. and it may okay. even spiral downward for if there's additional incentives for. Right, and when Tesla opens his battery plant there you go. in Vegas, right? And they don't burst yeah. in flame. I mean, outside of, re yeah, Vegas, somewhere. Okay. No charge. Oh, yeah, no, what the hell? Yeah. All right, I, well, then, you know, but these, ve but his vehicles are going to be a lot heavier. They're going to beat the hell up more out of the road than the cars in the parking lot. Yep. Point well taken. Yeah. Yep. It's it's like a truck, you know, the Dynaflex uh, test. Yeah. Ooh, man, you, it's unbelievable how the, 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 the pavement deflects. Now, mm -hmm. w if people were responsible and they drove Subarus, you know, then, you know, th that would be, wouldn't take that much of a, a beating on the roads. I think, what's that one they keep advertising in the police department? Okay, whatever. That's okay. All right. <laughs> Let's, what else we got to talk about on this one? Almost done. Just a few more notes. Um, the yeah. replacement fund, we will touch on this later. Uh, we'll see an increase of 160000 to the fund, and we'll fund about $225,000 in new equipment this year. Total dispatch fund revenues and expenditures are relatively flat as compared to last year, although an increase in wireless fees is expected. Um, because of that wireless fee increase, we are looking at a decrease of the general fund's um, transfer into the dispatch fund. It's down about 3.2% this year to $1.2 million. The budget, this budget also includes all of the maintenance contracts that will be needed for the new Starcom network and all of the related reimbursements from our governmental partners. Overall, this budget projects an ending general fund cash balance of approximately $20 million. This and represents... This, this, this is something I, I would like, you know, Nikki and, and uh, whoever to ask uh, the Illinois uh, Municipal League Risk Management Association when we do we get any credit at all when we upgrade like a dispatch system which can dramatically affect you know litigation because of response times and any of that that might be too question. it might be too heady i mean for <laughs> you know like if you put a security system in your house and you yeah, throw a camera in i mean i'm sure you, you you do get a break on it but yeah you don't have to make that a priority, concept, Nikki. Right? But I mean, you know, at some point, yeah. I mean, there's a big enchilada if you get whacked, you know. Right. And especially the, well, the fire department's separate and succinct, but uh, response times are huge, you know. And there, there's a lot of little things we do. I mean, we put flags on all the fire hydrants to make them readily visible i mean we i don't know so much about that but well no i mean they're getting the meat wagon there if somebody's having a grabber well getting you know. the, getting the big meat wagon there with the, <laughs> with the, the fire truck uh, a lot of fire truck and, and get water so, you know. right but we're not long grove where we use dry right. hydrants right so <laughs> you know but it, that's got to be special you know <laughs> anyway uh, okay, keep going. Let's okay, keep going. Almost done. This is the final stretch. Uh, our financial model projection um, fund balance varies between 72 and 87 percent. You will notice that that is slightly <laughs> below our 75 percent target that was set by Standard and Poor's. Um, just to remind everyone at home, um, we are trying to maintain a 75 percent fund balance to maintain our AAA rating, which allows us to borrow at a lower rate, similar to a credit rating. Explain 75, what, 75% of what? A 75% fund balance um, represents what we would have in general fund reserves and 75% of expenditures. So that would allow us to operate for one year, uh, three quarters of one year, uh, just on our savings. 14 million. 14 million, there you go, Catholic school. Well, you know, apparently I don't see that on this little oh, you screen here. Don't have but that Nikki's going to make sure we don't go below that, so it's okay. Um, and okay. There well, is, that, I mean, but you got to put correct. the numbers up. Well, we, we are below it. I mean, the, the well, projection is 67% right now. In the out years. Right. 
In the out years, we are projecting, um, for the next three years, we are projecting a strong financial fund balance. But what's important is that, you know, this isn't necessarily sounding the alarm. This is meant to right. keep an eye on it and that we will continue to revisit this each year. And I suspect that, you know, each year when we do approve the budget, we will be looking at that where we will end the year and that the board would consider that in which expenditure items you would choose to approve and that, going forward. That goes back to the debt service. Should we continue forward with the new TIF district? That's going to be a, a big expenditure. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's going to increase our debt burden. And I just want to make sure that people watching know that we're not talking about something that's going to affect our rating this budget, which is the 1617 right. budget. Correct. We are definitely Correct. not Correct. University Park that just announced a 25% no. reduction enforce in the police department in fact we're adding which is a sad state of affairs yeah. when that occurs so. questions this completes my overview um, i do want to add on to um, the village managers thank you to all the department heads and their staff we could not put this budget out with all of their assistance or without all of their assistance um, I would like to hand this off to the police department unless there are any questions for me before we proceed. I, I don't have a question for you, Nikki, but I do want to comment. I was quite pleasantly Excuse surprised, uh, not surprised, pleasantly uh, warm and fuzzy, let's put it, with the budget. Uh, I congratulate you on your work. Thank it's you. very well done. Thank and, you very much. Uh, I'm yeah, very I mean, proud well. of you. Thank you. I had a lot of help. <laughs> Anybody who's retired now? Um, yeah, yeah. No, Larry, no, you don't have to Larry say that. Larry did help. No, Larry did help. He, he worked until his last day here. Okay. I know he did. He gave 110%. Where is he now? You got a hotline to him? Day. Buffalo to look at the maple syrup. <laughs> this week? I don't know. It's coming up in March. It's going on. <laughs> you might want to that check the weather, huh? Don't you going. taste it? It's what the hell? It's a great place to go. It's not a... Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I echo that sentiment, Nikki. I do too. You know, now we got Bordeaux. That's right. Brian. We do have B Brian Bordeaux. Brian Bordeaux. Brian Bordeaux. Brian Bordeaux. Uh, Bordeaux, as some people call him. Um, Brian was a great help this year. He joined us um, in January as our new assistant to the finance director. Um, and he's just kind of getting his feet wet. And Where do you come from? Helping out. Elk same Grove Village. <laughs> oh, same place as uh, Joe. Is this Andy. your buddy? <laughs> oh, you know, we, well, yeah, obviously you knew each other. Right? They all three knew each other. <laughs> and Nikki, you didn't come from Elk Grove. I did not come did from Did you Elk work Grove. there? Nope. I worked did in you know? Highland Park before this. But and she knew who? Everybody. everybody. She knew the, oh, these two? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's probably because of some umbrella association or something. <laughs> Should y'all go to school together? Or? You just recruit the best candidates. That's fine. That's I fine. don't have a problem with that. Exactly. We're, we're, we've been doing that for a long time. We do have a nameplate on order. For okay, you. all right, fine. Where are we going now? The police? I'm going to hand what, this over first? to uh, <coughs> Deputy Chief Davies and Chief Fleshauer. Mr. President, <clears throat> members of the board, this year the police department's budget is being presented by our guest speaker tonight, Deputy Chief Rick Davies. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. The 2016-17 police department budget has been developed in conformance with the village, village's mission to deliver municipal services in a responsive, professional, and efficient manner. This budget has also, also reflects the Vernon Hills Police Department's mission to promote, preserve, and deliver a feeling of security, safety, and quality of service to members of our community. The police department's proposal, proposed budget contains a mix of currently funded items along with a number of new requests for consideration. The proposed budget does not contain any requests for additional personnel. The total budget request is $10,806,753, which is a modest 3% increase over fiscal year 2015-16's approved budget. Salaries are up $31,033, approximately 0.5%. 
This increase is necessary to cover the costs associated with providing step increases to our new, newer employees who are still within the step system. Benefits are up 293,387, approximately 10 percent. Personnel benefits are projected to increase by nearly 10 percent in fiscal year 2017, which is comparable to increased increases associated with each of the last several budget proposals. The majority of the increase is due to the increase in pension costs, health, care, health insurance costs, FICA, Medicare, etc. It should be noted that there are no increases in the proposed budgets associated with the collective bargaining agreements for police or telecommunicators. The CBAs for both units will expire on April 30th of 2016 and discussions with the unions have not yet, initiate, or have not yet been initiated. Whatever wage benefit packages are agreed to as part of the collective bargaining process will be in addition to this proposed budget. You know, it, it, I, I, I just want to point out that so the budget is actually $10 million, right? Correct. For the, poli the run of police department. And for those watching at home that think, you know, we make a lot of money off of traffic fines and parking fines. Let me point out the uh, traffic fines total $133,000 projected, right? Mm -hmm. And then parking fines is $60,000. I think that's enough to put one police officer on the street. So anybody that thinks, you know, traffic fines and parking fines, you know, run a police department, you know, get off the pipe <laughs> okay because that's pretty I mean in all honesty that isn't you know it's a pittance compared to what it really costs to put a quality police department on on the street okay contractual contractual services are up thirty six thousand one hundred and eight dollars about twelve percent the entire increase in this category this year is directly related to the new service and maintenance agreements, SMAs, associated with the implementation of the new Starcom radio network. New SMAs include the radio logger, phone logger, Starcom airtime, live scan system, two-factor authentication, and regional data sharing. In the commodities, we're down $35,270, about 16 percent, with the completion of the construction of the new police facility, most of the items that would normally be requested in this account have been reduced or eliminated. Equipment, we're up $20,145, about 11 percent. Again, virtually the entire increase in this category came directly, can be directly attributed to the two backup servers for the police department in Village Hall, totaling about $30,000. These two servers will allow the police department and the village hall to back up their data and information on a remote server in case of a catastrophe. Cat cat <laughs> a disaster, a failure, <laughs> <laughs> catastrophic <laughs> failure. <laughs> okay. The equipment budget also includes the replacement of four marked police vehicles. These vehicles are being replaced as part of the village's regular fleet replacement plan. What kind are those? What kind of? Yeah. Fords or we something? We utilize the, the Ford uh, Explorers. <laughs> okay. The SUV type vehicles. It's not the they, they give four, they're four wheel drive vehicles. <laughs> uh, and we found that the Tauruses are not as roomy as the Explorers. Okay. All of the remaining budget requests have been itemized and are included in attachment B, which should be in your packets. The proposed fiscal year 2017 budget has a number of alternative revenue sources other than the general revenue fund, including the E911 fund, grant revenues, DUI enforcement fund, Vernon Hills Park District contribu contribution, administrative towing fees, traffic enforcement fines, school resource officer programs, and drug forfeiture fund. These sources, along with Lincolnshire and Libertyville dispatch fees, produce almost $1.3 million in additional revenue to the village. That concludes the police department, if there's any questions. So, so the total revenues amount to what? 
from the general and the 911. Can I add those together and come up with almost if you add seven all, million or, if or you two? Added up all the revenues indicated would be about one million two hundred seventy nine thousand seven hundred and three, roughly that area. Really. So I don't take the four hundred fourteen thousand and add it to the. To no, that one point no. two seven nine. No, that's that four fourteen, and then you add the numbers below it, come up to the one million two seven nine. What's the eighteen thousand for Park District? That's the contribution the Park District gives to the village uh, for patrolling the parks. Okay, just and other and other services we render to them. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. So we come up with like almost 1.7 million. That's the happy total, Nikki. Uh, yeah, yeah. Slash finance director. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. But it that helps a little. Yeah. Just to have the. When do you anticipate? When do you? since the bargaining expires on the 30th, when so do you anticipate discussion? We have not heard back from the unions as of yet as to begin the negotiation process. Uh, as soon as we do, we'll start that process. I'm just curious if there's... Yeah, I mean, the hope is to complete those negotiations by the, before the end of the budget year. Um, that's the hope. You mean um, this budget year? This budget year. Mm -hmm. uh, correct. The reality is that it will likely extend beyond yeah. Um, but I'll be talking to you all at okay. some point about okay. that. Trustee Williams. Um, I'm sorry, I got my mind went with the, what you were saying yeah, there for a second. Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to uh, compliment the police department on their presentation of their budget and their detail of the budget. And I know I've had a little problem trying to review my budgets because of my vision problem. However, from obviously I looked at the police and public work very very close <laughs> and I did not see any fluff in this police budget so with that in mind I'd like to make a motion to approve the police budget second motion is second any further comments or questions if not roll call <clears throat> trustee cook aye trustee green aye trustee williams aye trustee hemda aye trustee schultz aye Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Motion carried. Yeah. That, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> very well. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I've been in there enough. I don't see any wood. Yeah. No, there's no wood. You know, mill work. Yeah. Oh, don't no. worry. I've already questioned you know. all of that before it went in. What, what kind yeah. of material is this? It's, it's a little nice. Maybe it's a little nicer than. A uh, high school locker room. I don't know. I it's a hundred times room. better than it was. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is better. Okay. Yeah. But it's I mean, beautiful. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly not opulent. No. By no means. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Where are we at? Next is uh, dispatch. Okay. Following thirty-seven. The 2016-17 budget for dispatch center fund. Revenues in this fund are projected to sustain a slight increase over the prior year. The combined wireless and land 911 fees are projected to be up 24,500. Dispatch service fees are projected to increase in accordance with the intergovernmental contracts. Those fees are budgeted to be up 27,837. Salaries are up 22,543, about 1.66%. Again, this increase is necessary to cover the costs associated with providing step increases to our newer employees who are still in their steps. Contractual services is up 25,195, 3.75%. This increase is associated with the implementation of the new Starcom radio network. Some of this will be offset with the dissolution of the current radio network. Contractual services I'm sorry, equipment is down 16,000, about 59%, as a result of elimination of one-time replacement in the prior year. This was a copier and a server for our new world system. 
the total dispatch center budget is two million seven hundred nine hundred ten thousand dollars up about thirty nine per or point three nine percent or $10,540. Despite all of these anticipated increases, the general fund contribution to the dispatch center is budgeted at $1,251,353, which is $41,850 below last year's budgeted level. With the uh, current initiative of the, the governor and uh, the state in general uh, to consolidate governmental units, what's the status in Lake County of potentially uh, generating additional yeah. flying. You beat me because I was going to give you a little closing presentation, but <laughs> okay. The communication. I'll hold it in advance. Give me, give me two, one I'll sec. Hold my question in advance. The communication center is currently servicing three police departments and three fire departments. New state legislation is driving additional consolidation of emergency dispatch centers. Mm. Under the current legislation, our center meets the criteria to continue operation into the future. We continue to look for ways to make the communication center more effective and efficient in its operation. We have had some recent informal discussions with a couple of towns that are exploring their options as additional consolidation takes place. Moving forward, we will explore and identify other potential customers interested in joining our communication center. We don't no. need to tear up a lot to add more, right? No. No. Okay. Those are, I think, we would, we know, would, if we did take on, if we did take on other potential clients, we may have to do some reconfiguration within the interior of the building, though. Okay. That's, yeah, that's kind of, so whatever came on, we'd need to yes. probably take those revenues and kind of dedicate them to an initial capital restructuring? Yes. And like we would take that into consideration as we bring these new customers yeah, right. on all so, so for this particular budget, it would Great. be pretty much plus one, minus one, and we wouldn't really see any bottom line change. No, probably not. And it truly depends on which, you know, what towns we would possibly take on. Right. If there are towns similar in composition to Lincolnshire, potentially we wouldn't have to make any additions to our radios. Um, but if you took on a larger uh, entity, then possibly we would, we would have to make those changes. You took over Chicago for them. That would be a new building. <laughs> <laughs> but would you need to add personnel then, too, if you take more? If, again, if we took on towns similar in composition to Lincolnshire's, potentially not. If we took on Chicago. There, there are some centers out there that are that don't meet the requirements currently, and if they were to full, you know, if they wanted to come to us, then potentially yes, we would probably end up hiring some of their employees to bring them on board. A lot of this has to do with the radio network. We're moving to the Starcom, which will be accommodating to a lot of towns in the area. However, there are towns that are still currently utilizing an 800 trunk system, but they, which are off our frequency, so. They, we would have to set up another radio system for them that we can monitor. You know, it, this is a segue kind of from dispatch, but on our, uh, our computer, uh, you know, based ability to call everybody in town in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. How do we get people, though, that are not accessible into the system is there any way to do that or or because we got a cell phone what's it called what's the, what's the program um, blackboard, blackboard connect. connect blackboard connect that's the way i get mine well i know that but what i'm saying is that if you don't register a cell phone we don't call it correct unless something changed you know yeah i mean again we've encouraged and i know mark and his team have encouraged folks to use that and sign up for it right you know with places on the website where you can do that and the like and well maybe it is is you know like the electronic signs would be yeah. a stimulant yeah, too yeah. Yep. yep you know in strategic you know in a couple of places other than here and maybe the press would think that this would be a good story to pursue yeah. seeing as how spring is right around the corner tornado season well yeah i mean you know it's it's yeah it's it's very very important because it, it replaced you know the actual reverse 911 that took what hours 
Well, it was based on the on landline phones and didn't include cell phones. This system includes cell phones. We've also actively uh, recruited people at like the law enforcement show. We have the ability to sign up there. We, uh, for a couple of years, set up a, a table at summer celebration. Um, we have it uh, pages on our website, and we have it in the new uh, new resident information package. Well, do we have like uh, you know from the whoever the telephone company is now, which is either what Comcast or AT and T, mm -hmm. Hardline. Right, right. So, do we have an accurate number of how many Hardlines there are in towns? I don't know what that number is, but yes, we can check that because they will tell us through Blackboard Connect. Yeah, I mean, be, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> because we just yeah. have no clue how many wireless carriers oh, no, uh, I, phones we I are. Don't disagree. Yeah. That's yeah, where the hard I, part you know, comes in. But if you sync even your Dick Tracy watch, you know, to your cell phone or your register, you get the call even on this thing. Right. Well, I, I would just like to tell the people that are watching, if you're not sure if you've got your cell phone hooked up or not, it was tested today. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And oh, yeah, every month. You're on right. the cell yeah. phone. So if you didn't get a call today, you're not hooked up. Right. I don't know. Maybe we can. Uh, I don't know what the, this is. One. Do, did us? Do we talk about this in, at the schools with our resource officers? Or there's got to be a way to work through the schools where these kids yeah. take something home to mom and dad. You know what I mean? Because like, they don't put their. <laughs> <laughs> so long as it's not report card time. You know what I'm might gonna... be an interesting vehicle to use too is every resident gets that park district publication. Spring, summer, winter, fall, there yeah. might be a mm -hmm. nice way to put a blurb in there, too, because everyone who's a, a resident idea. gets sent to every resident's home, and it's a printed publication. Yeah. So if someone isn't on cable, doesn't watch Comcast or whatever, that's another right, right. tool that I'm sure we could use or that they would mm -hmm. allow you to. Well, you can I ask a question? Are there a lot of towns that they have this now? Oh, yeah. Well, is there a way to, like, uh, I mean, even get network news to, like, do something? You know what I mean? Like ABC, NBC, you know what I mean? To tell people, you know, I mean, is it, would it be worth sending, you know, some kind of a press release to the major networks that service Chicago? We can certainly do that. Uh, Kim Christensen has a great network set up yeah. with the media, all forms of media. It would be an easy thing to do to put a press release together and send it out. Because there's got to be something like this in every town, I would yeah, think. Yeah, as you get new, as, as residents move out and new people move in, uh, it, it's one of those things that requires a, a consistent effort to try to get people to sign up. We yeah. used to be able to do that when we <laughs> made them pay for a vehicle sticker. <laughs> they had to come to Village Hall. We said, okay, pull us out to our ear. Yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be one way. There you go. Maybe you could charge five, five or ten bucks, you know. Just uh, whatever. God. it costs. Right. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, but that would be kind of interesting to get it out to the uh, yeah. the radio and TV, you know. Yeah. Okay, so Kim might be able to help on that one? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, because I'd hate to see somebody, you know, sawing wood and, you know, the tornadoes on their front porch and you know they're gone because that was one or, or a train derailment and it's got you know <laughs> toxic chemical well we had one let's face it it was in lincolnshire yeah but i don't know if that was toxic i don't want to imply that but we had a train derailment in the last two years right yes. lumber yeah well, that's fine timber you know yeah, what? And it, it's also great for if we have those types of accidents. And, you know, even if there's no injuries or chemical spills, right. it's nice to let people know that Route 45 and Deer Path are closed. Yeah, you know. You know, or 60 and and uh, and yeah, Butterfield. You are know, closed. I mean, you know. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, that Mark, concludes. <laughs> that concludes the dispatch center fund. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Is there a motion on this one? Motion to approve. Second. And how much is, is the, the amount 4%. of the budget? It only went up 4%. I know, but 4% of what? The actual amount $2, was $2,700,910. $2,700,910. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is everybody in agreement? Yeah. There's a yeah. motion and a second? Yes. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Trustee Green? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. 
What do we got? Fire Police Commission? Nope. DUI. 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 Okay. So with starting with the DUI budget, we have no planned expenditures from this budget. Money comes into this account by way of an assessment levied on DUI convictions from DUI arrests initiated by our department. Any expenditures from this budget will be brought before the board in the form of a resolution. The current balance in this fund is $51,082.59. Okay. Any comments or questions on this one? Only comment I would bring is I know we don't, and I had this discussion before, with the DUI in the pickup of the vehicle, they charge unbelievable amounts of money. We do not. That's correct. But uh, I know I brought it up before, but I don't know. Uh, I, I believe other people charge, uh, what was the amount? Other communities charge up to $500. And we're at 125. Pardon me? 125. 125. Oh, which is like a We charge what we, we what we believe are the actual costs to process and tow and impound a vehicle. Does the impound company or place where the vehicle goes then charges for it being there per day? They charge a towing fee themselves and a fee for storage, yes. Right. But others charge <coughs> Oh, I know they do. So what are the towns around this church? Yeah, Buffalo, Buffalo Grove is 500. Waukegan is 500. Buffalo Grove is 500. And I'm not sure of the rest. Not everyone does it. But I'm not sure what the other ones charge. The, the, the view of the board before was to not charge an excessively high amount of money. Uh, the fines are usually levied in, in court for DUIs. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't, I mean, anybody have a comment on that? So we're looking for a motion to approve the potential revenue of 23000 with zero expenditures unless otherwise so noted by a board resolution. There a motion and a second? Second. Yes. Roll call. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Margaret? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Grieb? Aye. Motion carries. Fire and Police Commission? I believe there's one more <coughs> drug forfeiture. Oh, drug. Let me go back. Oh, I missed okay. The, the drug forfeiture budget works similar to that of the DUI fund budget. There are no planned expenditures from this account. Any expenditures from this account will come before the board in the form of resolution. <coughs> the, our current balance in this account is 40, $45,312.03. Do we have a planned? I, I, we basically indicate a revenue stream of $23,000. Do we have a planned revenue stream here to approve? I don't under, even understand why we're approving we, this as a line item if it's zero. And it essentially is. We have no idea what the, what the amount of money coming in is. We take a guess, mm -hmm. um, and we plan no expenditures from this, as Rick said, unless we, you know some project or something comes up, and then in which case we bring it to the village manager for his approval and then approval by the board. What are, Bless you. And there was zero last year. Actually, we did expend money out of this account last year. Um, it was an unplanned expense, but we spent $20,000 for the uh, fitness room in the new police station. Oh, I'm sorry. How much is in the drug fund right now? Forty. Uh, the drug fund has 45312 and 3 cents. And there was no revenue, though, last year? I don't recall any... Uh, Money's going into that last year. So okay. essentially, this comes from, um, and you can Se stop me if I'm wrong, but seizures that are associated with cases that we solve. So it'll depend on whether how quickly cases get resolved, how quickly assets get liquidated. Um, I believe we have two receipts potentially. 
that just came in that wouldn't be reflected in the, the budget, but it does vary widely from year to year. Okay, well, take the motion I made for the, the DUI substitute $1 as the expected revenue, and that's the motion for the drug forfeiture fund. I okay, there's a motion and a second, but it's amended. So is the second agree? Okay. Uh, Trustee Cook. Chief, the, the drug forfeiture fund that, is that some place that, what are those funds available for? Because what I was thinking was the, the money that we're spending on the, the new Narcan stuff, the anti hair you know. Oh, absolutely. The, it, it's, it's supposed to be spent for, for drug enforcement, drug education, drug prevention, um, and training. And would it also then be able to, to purchase the supplies for? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Is that expenditure stream? Is that pill form uh, or injection for the heroin and it? There are. There's it's two different types. There's one. I'm sorry. There's three. One is a nasal spray. Okay. The second one is an EpiPen, an auto injector type, and the third one is what the paramedics use, just like you go to a doctor and they withdraw it from a bottle in a syringe and inject it. Uh, you'll see it in your board packet this week. We had our first uh, save using the Narcan this past weekend. Um, great product. But is there is there anything in a pill form that not that I'm aware of? No. That's used at the hospital or by. So who would, in other words, the drug dealers? What do they use? For the Narcan. No, what do they use if, if somebody's overdosing? Uh, usually they call nine one one. But no, no. Walgreen. It, they have, it did not happen with that young girl that was about fourteen years old. In the whole debacle, oh, it was Butler Lake. Yes, she was. She was. She was transported to the hospital, <laughs> where they gave her the uh, the naloxone or, or yeah the naloxone at the hospital, and then discharged her once so she was, was up. That was probably nasal or an ejection. Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. You know what? It's easier because you're not dealing with needles. needles right. And you're usually in a situation where you're you're down on your hands and knees, you're working on somebody, and it prevents accidental needle sticks. Hmm. And, and it's okay. also less expensive. But so, do we have which product? We have the nasal spray. Okay, and then the paramedics got... They, got they have the injectable. Um, and let's say some departments are using the... Um, yeah, the EpiPen. Okay. Well, that's injectable too, right? Yes. It's an auto injector. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, that's yeah. That's an in a topic that is a reality. So. All right. So we've we've already voted on this, right? No. 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 Okay. Roll call. Trustee Hebda. Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Green? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Okay, next. Motion carries. Police and fire, fire and police. So fire and police commission budget, it's $10,850. These monies will be utilized to conduct recruit testing if necessary during this fiscal year. Have we got a list now? There's a current standing list, but we've been going through it rapidly. So is there going to be another list made up this year? If, if we go through this list, then potentially we may have to have another test process and we create a secondary list. Okay. Yeah, have we given Because there's certain time? people that wouldn't be considered because of the score they get, period, right? Correct. Yeah. So how many people do we test? You know, to how fill like the last couple of positions. How many people showed up for the testing process? Yeah. We probably had about 120, I believe, that uh, took out applications. I think we ended up with uh, roughly 90 that actually showed up for the testing process. And then we whittled it down from there. But I mean, out of that 90 that took the we, test. We're you know, what our current list is, I believe there was 14 on the, okay. on the list. So the list is not that long? No. Okay. 
we're, we're already up towards, I believe, the fifth or sixth candidate. Okay. Chief, can you help me on that one? Yeah, we're down to candidate number four. Um, it, I'm sorry, you're right, it's five. The cost for conducting the test is negligible. It's a couple thousand dollars. The majority of the money is spent for the psychological and the polygraph oh, sure. and the background investigations. That's where your real cost comes in in the medicals. Sure. Okay. All right, so uh, what's the total budget, 10850 And have we given the sergeant's exam already? Yeah. April 12th. Okay, so it's on this year's Correct. budget. Correct. Okay. okay, is there a motion? Anybody else lit up here? Is there a motion to approve the uh, $10,850 Fire and Police Commission budget? So made. Motion and a second? Yes. Who, was, who made the motion? I did. Oh, okay. Second. Tom, second. Okay. okay. <laughs> you said it before. Okay. Yeah. I didn't hear I was just All right. Roll call. Trustee Schultz? I'm sorry. Is that me? I'm sorry. Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Green? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, Mike Atkinson, where's he at? He's here. He's here. We're jumping this one? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, public Works, that next? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, uh, How many pages are you? Uh, it's section K, and it's uh, page 83 through 112. And so, what letter? It's uh, letter K. K. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is this replaces page. Oh, I got it right here. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes, there was a handout to uh, reflect the actual table, so the numbers are now accurate to uh, to match that. Uh, thank you very. All right. Fine. Thank you very. Thank you very much. Um, glad to present the public works budget. The public works budget is four. Proposed budget is four million nine hundred and sixty-six thousand five hundred twenty-six dollars. This is a five percent decrease compared to last year's budget. Uh, the proposed budget reflects salary, wage, and fringe increases. Uh, of 1.47%. Um, the budget inclu includes decreases to both contractual services of 15.43% uh, mm. and commodities decrease of 10.28%. Um, I'll touch on it a little bit more, but a lot, large part of that is due to the Emerald Ash for uh, program. And we are very far along, and we're almost to the two-yard line at the end of this year. Um, other items, 1.68% um, increase to the equipment program. That equates to $4,600. Uh, we're working with uh, Joe and the Community Development Department in terms of getting laptops. Uh, well, we have laptops. Now we're getting tablets within the vehicles. So for inspection services, we'll have forms and we'll be able to more automate that. So that's what that change is. We are proposing no adjustments to the equipment replacement program. Uh, we did uh, a more conservative assumption in the prior year. So basically, instead of a 12-year uh, replacement cycle, we're funding it at eight-year replacement cycle. So we'll have more money for equipment going towards the future. So uh, we're not proposing any change because we did that last year. So those are all positive. Um, yeah, very, very pleased that uh, it is a 5% decrease overall for our overall budget. Um, I wanted to hit on kind of the, the, the key points, and really the key point is the, the decrease. Um, the decrease, as I said, was mostly due to the Emerald Ashbor uh, update. Um, to date, uh, 2,764 Parkway uh, ash trees have been removed. Um, currently, the parkway inventory is uh, down to 400 ash trees that we have to deal with. We're still injecting trees, um, but these are the, the remaining ones. Um, we anticipate at the um, conclusion of the spring 2017 replacement program, we'll have less than 100 parkway ash trees to deal with. Um, we started out at 3,500. 
I really want to thank the board. I think we've done a really good job in terms of over the last four years, um, not only removing a safety hazard, but also reforesting the village. And it, it's noticeable. Um, very proud that we've been able to do that. Essentially, that puts us uh, first and goal and inside the two-yard line. Um, dollar amount wise uh, the, the the reductions for just EAB parkway tree replacements uh, it's a reduction of eighty eight thousand uh, dollars we're going to plant the trees in-house um, tree removals will be removing less trees so that's a hundred and forty thousand dollars savings there um, so uh, just really good good news in terms of uh, emerald ash borer um, so rather than talking about the items that are being decreased, I suspect the board wants to really hear where there's the increases. So uh, wanted to touch on uh, where those may be and what those uh, new initiatives would be. Um, so holiday, the holiday lighting program, uh, we are looking to expand that program again. Uh, we've heard good feedback and I know the board has uh, shared that with us also. Um, so we're, we're looking to uh, increase our capacity for electricity uh, for the street lighting systems. Mm. If we're going to be adding lights to them, we need to make sure they're properly metered uh, with Commonwealth Edison. So we're looking at our infrastructure and making some improvements there. We'd also like to have, you know, I, I, I think the lighting has, uh, and uh, certainly would uh, respect uh, your feedback, I think the lighting has worked really well over this last season. What we'd like to do is have a common theme too that is spread throughout the, the whole village too in addition to the, the lighting. So we'll come back to you as far as what that specific uh, theme may be. Um, I do like along the Butterfield Road uh, corridor, um, you know how we add the whimsical, you know, whether it's Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day, et cetera, but have some sort of uh, decorations, like maybe a red bow on the planters, uh, maybe some garland and things like that. But uh, those are some ideas that we have. And I how, how do we get our, our partners who have huge displays on their property to keep in mind? Because that ice storm I know was nasty, but but you know what I mean? It, you know, like Rustolium. Yes. Um, one of the struggles that uh, we all have is uh, we all remember the the Winter Wonderland um, that had two wires, didn't have a ground to it. Um, right. And these are all grounded. And these are all grounded. So. Yeah, GFI faulted, et cetera. So what we're looking to do is we did add $2,000 in this budget for our overtime so we can help a little bit with that. When moisture gets in the system, it's going to trigger it, and those lights are going to go out. So we're, we're looking to improve upon that. I'm not, I can't guarantee that we'll be able to overcome the, uh, the moisture issue but we are looking to put in a little bit more time to, uh, to try to address that. We want to talk to our partners, too, as far as you know, their participation with displays, uh, educate them. And we may be willing to store them for them, but would they or their maintenance people help us as the, as the public works staff is running yeah, through you know, the whole yeah. village? Could they help uh, participate? I mean, because it kind of defeats the purpose if it's off for, you know, yeah, I was real bummed when the peacock died at the park district building. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It wasn't working anymore. I mean, but it, but obviously well, some some locations were, I mean, fire department, for example, nothing ever went out there. They must have been out there hitting it all the time. I, I think that's one of the keys is uh, if we can have our partners and their maintenance staff or the fire uh, district staff, they're there around the clock. And they can, uh, you know, work on those a little bit more than than what we're able to do. Yeah. It's it's a capacity issue for our staff. Right, exactly. What it, you know, and okay, well, uh, and and maybe some of these places everybody goes home obviously at night, and so well, we <laughs> you know, have but it, but it loses it, if it's not lit, it defeats you know. Yeah. 
the you bring purpose. up you bring up it's a great awesome. point. One thing that we'd like to transition towards is lights that work more frequently. So some of the lighting that we're looking is if we can improve our infrastructure and hang things off of our street light poles, those are up higher where in terms of them tripping, et cetera, yeah. it's not a safety issue. So those we have more confidence that we can keep those lit. Um, it's when they're in an area where people are walking next to that we struggle from a safety standpoint. Yeah. Uh, but how, about, how about if it's a gated area? If it's a gated area? You could still have people walking, though. Uh, like by it, it, up at the VHEC, where you can gate that. Fence it in quasi-gate. I would leave that up yeah, to the okay, risk I'm, managers. I'm, you know, if someone's <laughs> climbing a fence and they go over there, what is our exposure? Right. Um, so... It's, it's a struggle. Yeah, it's a struggle. Like um, I, well, or well, there, you know, you could. Well, I don't know. Or do you put it at? Could you have, you know, quite a bit over there? We would monitor it, and then, you know, you turn the stuff off after a certain hour. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. I know all over town it was great, but then when Mother Nature came in, I get it. You know. Yeah, we understood that that was hey. going to be a struggle. Wheeling, they they have a system that they're constantly chasing. If we could do this, um, we will bring it back to the board. We have some visions. We'd want to share that with the board, and so we'll come back to you and and share that. Get some more feedback. In terms of the budget, I wanted you to know that from a, what was in the uh, budget before, it was in the uh, events budget. Yeah. That has now been transferred to the public works budget. Uh, we've added $40,000 where shifted it from a different account into our public works budget. It used to be 3,000, so that's a $37,000. It's really a, a, a shift rather than a, a something I'm increasing and necessarily. Budget increase. um, so other items. Um, Contractual uh, street services, um, Martin and Associates. What we've always done at the end of the year is, uh, is they have a base number that they we pay them for snowplow services, and then at the end of the year we replenish it. Um, I want a budget based on what we're actually spending, so we've done an analysis on how much we are spending. So there's an increase uh, for the that line item about fifteen thousand seven hundred eighty dollars that just really re it's not an increase in terms of we're paying martin more it's just from budget standpoint more accurate um, so that's included pedestrian crossing signs the stop for pedestrians um, has been very popular we've went through greg's landing and we've added them um, there's deer path area gross point uh, fairway drive etc other people would like that uh, uh, more current sign and so we've added ten thousand dollars to go through the village uh, and uh, upgrade those pedestrian crossing signs uh, let's see other items the forty eight hundred dollars for GPSing um, we'd like to have automated vehicle locators placed on the senior bus and the sweeper I think it gives us more information to an an analyze where our senior bus <laughs> is going uh, what what page you on, Dave? I keep I'm bouncing page around 86. here. Huh? I'm on page 86. We blew right the through page. the golf course, huh? <coughs> okay, go ahead. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the uh, decrease. Uh, so now I'm in line item, uh, the public works building and grounds maintenance services. Um, a net decrease of uh, 214000 We touched on that. That's Emerald Ash Borer. Uh, ground maintenance supplies, similar. We just talked about the holiday light show uh, item, so that's what that one's about. Uh, let's see. Other increases. Uh, we talked about the tablets. Uh, over time, we talked about the holiday lighting, uh, $3,601 for overtime as a whole. It reflects the 2000 for holiday lighting and also uh, slight increases for uh, the pay increase uh, for a couple of these events. Um, the other one is the for the part-time seasonal salaries. 
uh, a net increase of $14,726. Um, what we're looking to do is to improve services by hiring. Uh, there's no increase in terms of the hours that we're requesting for seasonals. What we're looking to do is instead of having two three-month positions, hire one person for six months. Uh, we think we can attract a, a higher skilled uh, employee and we'd like them to, uh, to pay them the higher wage rather than the $10.25 uh, wage that's more for uh, watering or infield maintenance. So that's my overview on the Public Works uh, operation budget and if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. You got a golf course. Is this something the board, board wants? Carpeting on the bridges? I mean, no, where I, did, I mean, who brought that one up from, from the board? What? Not I. It's an old one, but I, if it, if it's no longer needed, we'd be glad to. Well, well you I, know, I'm just, you well, know, I'm, 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 let, let's, you let's, bring anything up on it? Let, let's go back to where this began. I'm the cause of the fire <laughs> drill that happened last year. I slipped and fell on my coccyx and oh, that hurts. <laughs> and <laughs> as a result uh, the because of the spikes you, you were the, yeah the, the spike was it, shoes it, it was a oh. it was a rainy uh, misty morning and I was out there walking and the bridges had not been cleaned in years so they had a layer of scum on them so Public Works went out and scrubbed them with a high pressure washer and the traction was outstanding the remainder of the year. I didn't see a need for the carpeting. Uh, the carpeting is just going to promote d deterioration to a certain level, although that is pressure treated wood on those bridges. But I think a semi or biannual cleaning of the bridges un until they need to be actually replaced when they become hazardous to the cart operations, uh, I think is sufficient. I don't think the carpet is a... Uh, I have no objections to having this removed. Uh, just wanted just, to address I mean, that concern, and we yeah. certainly can power wash them and spend the time with a seasonal to, to do that operation. Uh, I appreciate the feedback. annually is plenty because it was 10 years in the making of uh, the, the slime layer that was yeah, we, built on. You know what, uh, every spring we will get out there, we will make sure, give us feedback if you feel that we need to do more than that. And then the cage replacement is 20000 That was, it's expensive. That's not a pocket change, you know. Yeah. That seemed rather expensive when really all we're talking about is changing out the, the pipe from, you know, uh, basically EMT to <laughs> a, a durable, whether it be schedule 80 plastic or yeah, schedule 40, plan. you know, iron pipe or a vinyl covered pipe. I think part of that was um, replacing Kyle's, the netting Kyle's idea to upgrade the, the whole cage a bit to be able to maybe even mount a less camera. Camera. You went the new yeah. cage, basically. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. a Before budgetary a figure that was shared with me from Kemper, yeah. and uh, we will research it further, make sure it meets the vision of uh, uh, everyone involved, and we certainly can bring it back. If they get it, you know, a, a, a cage at one of the golf courses they actually own, if they want to donate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I, the, the problem is, is you know, this is made out of basically conduit. All right, it's it's inch, inch and a quarter, yeah. or something like that, but it's still basically EMT. What's he going to use that to give lessons out there? Well, I yeah. just, just wanted to upgrade. He just and wanted to upgrade so. the whole. What does that include, like video equipment or something? I, I, no, 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 it doesn't. He was looking for a connectivity, cage, and he was looking for to expand beyond just two of them, and right. potentially four. Right. Um, potentially adding the video, but this did not include the video. Um, but this would this would inure to his benefit. Uh, well, the, well the it, golf it, course. It, it would be an amenity for the golf course. Yeah. yeah okay. The ability to, to to give you know lessons and more of a warm up area it would be attractive. I mean that's one of the things we lack. Is all right. So this would be four cages. 
brand new? Yes. Okay. Well, I, and the know. subsurface, you know, preparation. Yeah. Right. Trust do you have the. And mine are not related to the golf course. Oh, okay. As you have replaced the trees from emerald or ash, and the new ones have gone in, have you found that they've survived, or have you had to replace those as well? Um, so, so more of my discussion was emerald ash borer. In terms of the tree replacements, we're looking at between 200 and 250. It's going to be 250. Um, 200 of them would be ash tree replacements. We're anticipating 50 of these trees being for trees that did not survive because okay. of the, the heat of the summer right. and uh, just die and off. Then so. Also, in your replacement, are you looking at straightening those trees that have kind of tilted? I'll give you a little list of the ones that are tilted. Tilted that haven't. <laughs> they're not. That, that's legit. So, as, as, if we could somehow pull those back, and then my next question is: with the fact that um, there is no electronic drop-off anymore in Vernon Hills for. Can we sponsor something, and would that cost us money to be able to allow people within the village like a one time month to go dump those teas and stuff? Uh, very, very good timing. We just had a meeting with the Park District, Vernon Township, okay. uh, etc., and we're trying to put together an event um, in the next uh, couple of months. We'll make sure to advertise it. Um, Yes, uh, there's going to cost us something. I'm sure to yeah. staff. What what has been requested is um, two thousand dollar donation from the village to uh, help participate in the program. Uh, there'd be four trailers of electronics that would be collected as part of that. Um, I have talked to uh, Manager Kelmar. We think it's a good idea. We'd like to contribute that two thousand dollars and provide a, a solution rather right, than people. Right, people just are dumping it out in the streets, or they're putting it in their garbage, and it's just going to impact. The There's also an emergency meeting yeah. that is being held uh, Thursday, so I'll attend that and give board an update as oh, far as good. where people can recycle, and we'll make sure that that's on television good. also. Perfect. Yeah, that that meeting sounded very dire in that you know they're uh, the uh, contractor. Uh, is backing out. Uh, he's not accepting anything after May 1st or whatever, and they're looking for more money. Who's got the Swalco budget line item? Is that in Public Works? Because yeah. you may need to take that golf course carpeting and transfer that to Over the Swalco, to the Swalco fund. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, then you lose that. You lose the carpet, and the carpet goes. To I think it's for a worthy cause. It, re it really is, because we, we've got people that are yeah. putting that stuff, with um, you know, into their garbage, and it's, <coughs> it's not a good yeah. choice. Yeah. Used to be a profit center, and now but we I'll have to But I'll give you a list of some of the crooked trees. I appreciate that. Just to pull them back or whatever. So and hopefully <laughs> we can still encourage our residents, because if it is a hot summer, to continue to water those new trees that we're replacing. Now, that's been really nice. Allegedly, that we're using, what, black elms? No. It, I'm not aware to of To replace the ash trees. Some of them. I'm not aware of black elms. What do we use? We, we, well, we Hickory. have a, quite a diverse list yeah. of there's Maple. Over 20 different species that we're planting. I'll check whether or not there's a, a black elm. I'm not aware of the black elms. How would I know what a black elm is? It's not white. All knowledgeable. Allegedly, it's in front of my house now. That's Apparently. what I was told. The black elm? I don't have a problem with it. I mean, but elm trees, it kind of took a dive about 30, Wait, 40 only, years ago. American elms. There's but new black hybrids. Elms are okay. Apparently. All right, well, that's fine. There's <laughs> triumph elms. There's other elms that oh, are hybrids this, that uh, don't have Dutch elm disease. Yeah, so we oh, like we might be using some elms or? I, I know we have elms. Oh, I do maybe not I got know if elm. we have black elms. I have Somebody one, told me that. I don't know. I have one more question. What, if, what can we do for the residents who have these borash trees on their I mean, tough. It's a t I mean you're, we're going to see tough. these trees deteriorate over time and cause more damage. I mean, we even see it in the corporate yeah. 
I don't know. Is there anything we can? I don't think. I know it's their own property and it's expensive to remove a tree. Yep. They need to do something. Well, unless we could, I, I mean, could we, we get a deal? A discount or something you know, from a but service. Who knows? Yeah, we, we did talk about that at the outset of uh, the program, and uh, we tried to have our contractor who does removals, would they participate? Right. Would they hold the same price? And it's apples and oranges is what they told us. In terms of going into someone's parkway, it's right there. They flop the tree. It's easy right. to right. chip easy and haul away. If it's back. in someone's backyard, they usually have some heirloom in the backyard that they're worried about damage to or some claim or the tree falling on the house <coughs> and how far is it to have it dragged out and restoration, et cetera, becomes. So they wouldn't hold the price and uh, we weren't able it's a to offer that to you. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, there's Schultz and I, Trustee <laughs> Schultz, we know of some lady in Gross Point that, my God, she has a backyard of a... Yeah. We've, um, and I'm not... Uh, we actually, um, I had contact with a resident uh, over the past well, week, and what we did was we gave her, or gave this individual the names of the, and phone numbers of the three contractors that are working here in town and encourage yeah. them to <clears throat> contact them in right. case they might be able to work some kind of deal for being yeah. in town. <clears throat> That's a rough one. There isn't much we can do. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've alerted a number of uh, right. residents about the trees and encourage them to get them down and push them to get them down and eventually yeah. they do go but yeah. you know we're trying to educate them on the dangers of the tree uh, exactly so because yeah. they're getting brittle and yeah. oh, we are seeing really good compliance with uh, homeowners and uh, businesses on removing their trees so okay. All right. they're being proactive especially the cost. the debtor they look you know it, it, I mean, when you don't have any foliage and it's like so you'll keep July, it you, know, you know, it might, it it might be dead. <laughs> keep us posted on the electronic stuff because I think that's, that you know, the electronic, um, the drop-offs or the, if we can do something there because I think that would be a real plus for our residents to get rid of some of their old computers, whatever, TVs, all those electrical things if we can do something. We definitely will do that. Uh, it's it, the it used to be called Recycle Rama at yeah. the mall. It's going to be at our metro station. Good. I'll make sure I push out the details. Are, are we definitely. cutting this off after his yeah. uh, budget? Yes. Yeah. So we've uh, we've went through the we operation. Can come back budget. again another day yeah. to finish oh, we this up. We, we did make it through my operation budget. I don't know if there was a motion on the operation budget or I more discussion. Second it. <laughs> There's a motion. Well, the only, I, I, don't know. I mean, the, the numbers are so small. We talked about some of the things for the golf yeah. course, but yeah. I would suggest that we just, that becomes the public works fluff for this year. Well, Rusty Williams? What comes at public works? Carpeting. It, it, I thought we weren't going to do that carpeting. Well, Those other items you're discussing oh, okay. are not in my budget. They're in the yeah. capital yeah. budget. Yeah. So yeah. if you approve my budget. Yeah, I wouldn't mind using 20 yeah. grand to do some more trails. Yeah. Paved, you know, card pads. Or at least fines. Okay. There's a motion and a second. <laughs> Roll call. All right, so this is to approve the four point what? Four million nine hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred and twenty six dollar okay. operation budget. There's a motion. Is there a second? Yes. yes. Okay, roll call. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Grebe? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Motion carries. My other three budgets are fairly small. Right. If uh, you'd Just like me to go fast. through them. Uh, and we've went through this before with the, uh, we've already presented the uh, five-year uh, MFP budget before. The um, capital sub-fund bu budget, um, the, the budget, Amount is one million four hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Which um, one is that? This is in tab H. H. What? Tab H, page now. sixty-seven. H is in home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What happened to M? This is where the carpeting comes in. <laughs> yes. So, in, in terms of the lar the larger uh, items. Uh, Straightforward as far as the public works uh, public works building, um, 
Village Hall, there's a uh, voice over IP technology, $80,000. Uh, we're going to do some patching, and we talked about the senior parking. So in terms of the senior parking, there is $40,000 should we decide to do that at a later date. Uh, preventive maintenance is similar as four. Uh, new items are the police uh, and communication center parking lot, uh, concrete patching to Port Clinton uh, Bridge, and reclamite, which would extend the uh, MFT dollars. Uh, Village Hall, Vil, Vernon, <coughs> Village of Vernon Hills Golf Course, the Muni, um, that is where you talked about the carpeting of the bridges, $10,000. If you didn't want that in there, this would be the time to have it removed. Um, that or move it to the tree replacements because I know you've been treating a lot of trees out there for EAB, and at some point in time, you know, so maybe we need to... Is that for animal work? Well, just bite the bullet. I mean, it's bullet. not saving the trees, right? Well, it's they're hanging. They're doing okay right now. I think the dollar amount that we have is sufficient to, so it's, to go through. So we're getting just full take it bloom out, put at it, it back into reserves. It's extending their life. It's manageable. Uh, at the end of the each budget year, if we have some money, we'll be able to address that okay. without an increase. What are we using out there? <coughs> the chemical? Triage. Triage. Okay. Uh, let's see. Moving along, uh, general purpose, the uh, the Kids Castle uh, donation, it, it says 200000 but that's over two years. Um, there was discussions on the electronic message yeah, board signs, right so uh, $150,000 was included on right that. Um, we will be doing the deer path covert uh, repairs. Uh, we've hired a, co a consultant to put the plans together. Um, that's that's my presentation on this line item. If I would entertain any questions the, that you may have. The road and bridge tax, that, that's a property tax line item, or where is that? I thought you were doing this in two years. It is a line item that we receive it's indirectly. Passed. It's related it's only, to it's the Vernon Township, okay. um, and that determines the amount that we get. So we don't actually levy the tax, but it comes through the township. It's its okay. completion. I know. But the actual line is 100. It's on page 873. Yeah. It's got it. 200,000 is right here on page right, 68. But, right. But on 73, the actual line is only 100,000. And why do we have 200,000 listed here? That's over. Yes, here. Dave. Yeah. What was the question? If we're only going to, uh, according to what I viewed on the last board meeting, it said there was 100,000 for. 1617, not to, going to the Kids Castle, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kids Castle, my understanding is this was prepared <coughs> early, then there was the board meeting. Right. Uh, my understanding it's 100,000 over it's so this each figure, year for two years. This figure would be changed then to 100. Absolutely would be. Thank we'll you. note that. Not that I'm for it, it. I just want to make sure the number is correct. I understand your point. Well, it is a hundred thousand, though, right? Over here. I'm paid seventy-three. It is a hundred thousand. I don't yeah. care it what's on seventy-three. I'm looking at his budget no, but the, but on the page six. The narrative the actual is budget on page seventy-three right. has a hundred thousand dollars in it. If you pay, if you turn to like page for, seventy-three, yeah. be accurate, right. please. All so it is is that on is. page the, uh, no, the nine, dollar amount is accurate. Hold the phone. Hold the phone here. What are, what are you saying, Dave? Um, Trustee Williams wanted to assure that the dollar amount is accurate. Uh, Nikki has confirmed it's $100,000 in the budget. And the, the budget. narrative needs to be corrected where it's right. 200000 over two years. We acknowledge That's what that. I want corrected was the narrative. Thank you. Okay. And we're pulling the carpeting, so that goes from 65000 to 55000 Making a million three hundred seven. Correct. All right. Is there a motion then? No. For a million three hundred and seven thousand, so made. Second. Motion is second. Any further comments or questions? Roll call. Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Green. Aye. Trustee Williams. Aye. Trustee Hebda. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. 
Motion carries. Thank you. Motor fuel tax budget, uh, we did discuss the road program would be $800,000. We talked that the Lakeview project is not in this year's budget. We would be discussing that as part of a future budget. Uh, the dollar amount is for expenditures $801,000. I have no further input. Where's the um, extra one from the? This is 801. Yes. Well, page. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What the extra one is? Hmm? I mean, just wondering. One thousand is okay. for contractual right. services, not elsewhere so classified bank fees. Eight hundred one total. Eight hundred one. Okay. What what section of town are we doing now? Section of town is uh, the New Century Town Manor Homes. Yeah. And also uh, some limited sections of north and south woodbine by the furniture store and such yes sir and then anywhere else i mean a woodbine no just the two just the part that's vernon hills yeah, just, the, just the part that's vernon hills and only sections of those parts yeah, right, within right, vernon right. hills yeah. on north woodbine and south woodbine <laughs> is uh -huh. it, it okay you gotta yeah. go through vernon hills is it something involving now the <coughs> new uh you know alzheimer facility right. they did some improvements um, we are doing additional improvements on the south woodbine adding a curb along the south yeah. edge of it yeah was it like several hundred a hundred feet or something or it's the southerly half of the uh, roadway of south woodbine and adding a curb okay. you, you we, we can't get uh, Vernon Township to do that uh, it's within our jurisdiction, so. It give them something to do, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moving on to a more pertinent question. Yeah. Uh, I'm noticing that you're increasing the <clears throat> revenue stream 53,000 plus or minus. Revenue motor stream. fuel tax. The motor fuel tax is based on estimates that we received from IML. So they are, you know, they are, um, right. shall I say, optimistic. Yeah, let me go backwards then. Uh, if we take the 1516 uh, estimates that IML gave versus actual, where are we at? Slightly below. No, the revised budget was near the date. We're running slightly below. So we could adjust that amount. We're cutting into revenue or cutting into the reserves anyway. So yeah, I, 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 that that whole MFT thing just—I mean, it's become a joke. Uh, <coughs> but that's in a, in a good way. No, a uh, who is the uh, Joe Pesci? You think this is funny? You think I'm funny? That's kind of funny. Well. Because it's used for other purposes? Because it's diminishing and there's no plan to improve it and infrastructure, although our infrastructure is relatively new and in relatively good shape, the rest of the state is crumbling. The rest of the United States is crumbling. And we're... So that, I, I'm on a soapbox. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> I, I just don't... Okay. Well, yeah, we don't want to go there. Cause, <laughs> right. Because it could get you know kind of edgy yeah. anyway all right what, what what so what's our eight eight hundred and one thousand or something yeah, motion to approve at eight hundred and one thousand second uh, is it eight hundred and one or eight hundred thousand because the one doesn't count eight hundred and one thousand eight zero one thousand okay that's not what's represented on page 78 it's on 75 no it's, right. <laughs> yeah, it's eight hundred thousand okay well, Eight hundred thousand, right. because right. you said right. the one thousand didn't count towards right. capital oh. contractual services. It looks like the way that this is subtotaled is the hundred thousand is counted towards the administration portion hmm. of the MFT budget, and the eight hundred thousand is the actual capital. So to approve the whole budget, you would need the eight hundred one. Okay. Okay, so it's eight hundred and eight hundred one thousand. All right. Is there a motion to, to approve? Yes, already. In a second. Yep. No, no further comments or questions. Roll call, please. Trustee Green. Aye. 
Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Metro Station subfund budget, last uh, of the public works related ones. Uh, the proposed budget is $108,400. Um, essentially, the increase is $50,000 uh, for some uh, improvements. Fence replacement, $15,000. That's along the uh, James Martin side, uh, uh, needs repairs. Um, the other is water quality pond uh, and platform drainage improvements, 35000 I I will bring this back to the board. We're talking to Metro as far as what their role is versus ours. We know when you walk from the, the, the parking lot over the tracks that there's sections that don't drain. It, uh, it needs to be addressed. We think that the drainage off of their tracks is just a pipe that's buried into the ballast stone and it's not draining and it's causing some uh, people to walk through water and sometimes on ice so we want to we want to look at that the pond next to it is a, a, a filtering pond and uh, it's cattails etc and so we think we can do better there well the icing occurs what once you're across the tracks it is as you're approaching the tracks um, from the metro station like side. in the morning everybody's crossed and they get on the other side of the track yeah in the morning when you're trying to go across the tracks it's before you get to the tracks and the warning platform it's right along that and edge. it's icy it's that's at, not at, good yes. no. not good so we we want to meet with metro we want to put a plan together we want to share that with the board i will bring this back to the do board. we do we do the de-icing or is that uh, metro it's an interface. We do part of it. They do part of it. <laughs> they take they care of the tracks. They take them. care of the truncated domes. Right. We the platforms themselves. Yes. Yes. Who, who falls? Who's liable? I mean, it's right on that interface. Probably, it's that probably. I want to take care of. So we've been throwing a lot. <laughs> we haven't been stepping back. We've been throwing extra salt down to try to right. take yeah. care of this. Whether it's the, you know, I think it's. Were we out there? We're trying like to help. this morning, clearing that that path and such because of the snow we were out uh, doing all the sidewalks including twice. The, yeah okay twice so. yes. okay all right is everybody clear on this one no it's what okay I'm, I'm not seeing a budget line item that matches the expenditures here in the detail this is similarly split like the budget previous the total for contractual services is 102,300 and the total for per, uh, for commodities is 6100 which comes to a total of 108400 Versus 6,000 here. On page 81. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also on okay, page Okay, cleaning supplies, electric supplies, flags. Yep. HVA. Mm, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. Uh, then the, uh, this uh, last account is the uh, repaving account. And is there a fund that we're no, it's not the last one within the general one. fund? Are we accruing for that, or what's the status of the accruals? For the re. Yeah, re for the permanent improvements, the Metro Parking Fund. Where's the repaving? We paid 150 thousand to repave it in 13 14. Mm-hmm. We collect uh, Metro um, parking fees, right? And ultimately, we collect that money, and it goes towards uh, the improvements, and that's how we funded that previously. Right, but there's an accrual someplace, right? There's a separate fund. The status of that fund currently. In it other words, actually, oh, when ahead. we decide we have to repave it again, how deep are we going to have to go into our pocket? Got it. What are you repaving, Metro? 
we do have a fun balance in the metro parking fund and it does accumulate in that actual fund pulling up that number Jim, are you talking about the metro station repaving? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, we consider this a sub fund. So right now there is not a balance in the metro fund. So this would be this would be coming out of the general fund if we were making that improvement. So anything that was not pulled in from the revenues that we generate from the station would come and be supplemented from the general fund. Okay. So that we're going to have to pay the whole boat and we're running a deficit of $12,000 a year. Correct. And that's similar to right now how we are handling our capital sub fund as well that is supplemented by the general fund. And that's something that we'll be looking at in future years of accumulating a reserve for all of our capital improvements going forward, separate from the general fund. I, I know we had a parking lot increase two years ago fee increase mm -hmm. uh, fees yeah parking fees is it about time that we had another one I, think we I, I mean it's something to consider but I we also remember we're limited on what right. we can do based on the metro agreement right, right. I so know I, we're constricted but I think we're uh, and we'll check on this but I think we're up against the limit okay. that they allow um, I think we did that the last time. Yeah, we yeah, I, right. yeah. I agree. So, I yeah. believe. But we, we can we can check to see what what the number is right, right. now because we are running a, a deficit here, and it's not a full service line either. I mean, you know. Right. Um, the times that I want to use that line, there's no service. Weekends, right. late evenings, coming back from downtown. If I wanted to see a play downtown. There's no service, et cetera, right. et cetera. So I, I don't have a fondness in my heart for losing money on that metro line. No, but I'm sure glad we got that metro yeah, line. I, I and agree. And it took years just to get yeah, one no, stop, much less get as right. many as we have. I agree. It's a great amenity for the town. Right. But on the other hand, you know. Oh, I, I, I agree. It could be it a would lot be nice better to have amenity. additional trains, yeah. but and we you know, I'm not uh, adverse to doing that. Yeah. But um, wasn't there something about, um, you just said it, new new boxes and then we well, could no, raise I, the fees? I, if you end up, I know and I understand uh, we have a contract with them for the fees, but uh, other things that you could possibly do, uh, vending machines or something that would be additional income. Just no revenue, right? If we could put those in. in there. Vending machines. Or put it, you mean put in the coffee day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have somebody come and put in. It's going to be nickels and dimes, but it's something. <laughs> nickels and dimes add up to dollars. Well, yeah, yeah but the, I mean, you know as well as I the number of times that we can't. We probably have to put an addition in. Well, no, the times we've <laughs> campaigned at the, the train station right. for various. I mean, people are, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't. They're there right. 38 seconds before because they got to they could get a cup of coffee. They might their, be there a little bit earlier, though. Maybe. And you bring up the roach coach. Yeah. Yeah, well, that too. Yeah, if somebody Only could. Only thing past that, public health. Um, yeah. So standards. This um, thirty-eight thousand that we're gonna pull out of uh, the uh, general fund. What exactly are those for? Those expenditures. Where are, we, where are you asking as far as what the increase for this line item is? Yeah, the, the 37,600 that are actually the 12,400, excuse me. The 12,400. Is that just the difference? That's is that the, what that is? That, that adds up to $50,000. Well, the difference between the incoming revenues, the 96,000 and the total expenditures of 108,400 would come out of the general fund. So that's the 12,400 would be subsidized by the general fund because okay. the revenues that are generated. Okay, out of yeah, the difference between the 108 and 96. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. All right, is there, so the total budget's 108,400? Yep. That's correct. Okay, is there a motion to approve that amount? To me. Second. Okay. 
Motion is second. Any further comments or questions? Roll call, please. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Grebe? Aye. Motion carries. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what, did we do M or L? No. Replacement fund? No. We're we only did right D, here. D, E, that, F, I, J, oh, and K. That's all yours, isn't it? Never mind. Oh, you got two more. Okay. Uh, if we, uh, I'll, I'll go as long as we want. No, no, no. We'll come back on the 16th and finish everything. Well, he's only got L and M, so he will be done with him. Not, we don't have to be. No, but there'll be a regular be. meeting, and he'll be here anyway. And L and M, and actually, I was going to team up with Dave, so if the board would like to wait until the 16th, we can it's do that. Me. I, yep, I've got a trustee over here that needs to go home. <laughs> well, I got somebody that's got to go, you know, to the uh, Well, yeah, that facility. can't help the problem. We're pleased we made it My this brother. far. As Nikki yes. said, it's okay. okay. Is there a motion to adjourn committee to hold? So made. And don't go into closed session. Second. Motion is second. Roll call. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Greed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank okay. you and good night. We'll be back on the 16th, right? Yeah.